This meeting is called to order. Mr. Clerk, please conduct the prayer and fight salute. God of the universe, look thou with the favor upon these here assembled, and bestow thy guidance upon the members of the governing body in their deliberations. This we ask in thy name. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. In event of emergency, the proper method for exiting the council chambers is through the three rear doors in the room. Occupants should proceed down the staircase, out the front door, move away from the area of the front steps. Any members of the public wishing to speak in a few moments will have a... We do have the sign-in sheet. Uh, any members of the public wishing to speak during the public comment session at the end of the meeting, please sign in on the white sheets provided in front of the room. Please turn off all cell phones or place them on vibrate. If you must take a call, please leave the chambers to do so. Mr. Clerk, please call the roll. Mr. Colvis. Here. Coziel. Here. Brown. Here. Armstead. Here. Cosby Hurling. Here. Sadowski. Here. Sheehy. Here. Yamakaitis? Here. Medina? Here. Kaczynski? Here. Mr. Moore? Here. I'd like to move into the minutes of, uh, please take a seat. Please, Ms. Hero. Please. There you go. Thank you. All right. The crossing guard Minutes. Uh, I ask for approval of the minutes of the regular meeting of May 21st, uh, 2013. Mr. President, I move the approval of the minutes of May 21st, 2013. I ask for a second. Second. Mr. Calvis. Mr. Calvis on the minutes? Yes. Cozio? Yes. Brown? Yes. Armstead? Yes. Cosby Hurling? Yes. Sadowski? Yes. Sheehy? Yes. Yamakaitis? Yes. Medina? Yes. Kaczynski? Yes. Mr. Moore? Yes. Uh, we have a presentation tonight. I'd like to ask uh, the mayor if he would uh, participate. Crossing guard Eleanor Conrad? Is she in the house, in the chamber? Uh, All right, could, uh, could you call her, see if she's available? If not, we will hold it next month for Eleanor. Thank you. And is Gail uh, in, the, in the audience? Yes. Would you come up, please? We have a resolution for you. I think most people know Gail. She's our parking enforcement officer, so she has high visibility in the city of Linden. And she's not always a popular person, especially when she gives parking tickets. My phone rings quite a bit, people complaining, but I know Gail's out there doing her job and that's what she's getting paid for. Unfortunately, she's not appreciated, but uh, again, if we didn't have people like Gail that's dedicated and diligent, we would have chaos when it comes to parking in our city. And because of Gail's professionalism, uh, we are awarding her a resolution to honor her for everything she does for the city of Linden. Uh, Chief, would you please read the resolution? 
Thank you, Mayor. I'd just like to add that Gail is appreciated in the, in the police department. Um, whereas Gail Horanek was hired by the city of Linden on March 8, 1999, as a clerk typist in the purchasing department, and then transferred to the Linden Police Parking Enforcement Office on October 20th, 1999. And whereas in March 2012, the Linden Police Department computer ticket vendor, e-ticket, recognized parking enforcement officer Gail Horanek for being the number one summons writer in the state of New Jersey. And whereas on March 25th, 2013, E-Ticket notified the City of Linden that Parking Enforcement Officer Gail Horanek had issued the one millionth E-Ticket summons in the state of New Jersey. And whereas Gail Horanek has written a total of 120,789 tickets that has generated 3,513,218 dollars for the City of Linden. Whereas Parking Enforcement Officer Gail Horanek has been working for the City of Linden for 14 years and has never taken a sick day. And whereas Parking Enforcement Officer Gail Horanek efficiently performs her duties while driving in a motor vehicle, on a bicycle, and by foot. And whereas Parking Enforcement Officer Gail Horanek supplements her primary job of issuing summonses by assuming additional duties such as police matron, backup school crossing guard, and also serves as a member of the Office of Emergency Management when needed at no additional cost to, this, to the city. And now, therefore, be it resolved that Mayor Richard Gerbunka of the City of Linden do hereby recognize Parking Enforcement Officer Gail Horanek for her dedication to her job in the City of Linden, performing her duties diligently and with a high degree of proficiency going above and beyond to make sure all of our streets are clean of congestion, <coughs> hazardous parking conditions, and that there is sufficient parking space turnover for Wood Avenue merchants at times under difficult and trying conditions. And being, be it further resolved that Mayor Richard Gerbunka thanks and honors Parking Enforcement Officer Gail Horanek. And this resolution is signed by uh, Council President James Moore and Mayor Richard Gerbunka. While we're taking some pictures, uh, Councilman Sadowski asked to uh, make a comment. Gail? On behalf of the Sixth Ward, I know you've answered a lot of questions for me that the, uh, people asked about parking and so on. <clears throat> I just want to say that you're a credit to the city, a credit to the Sixth Ward, and you've helped me out quite a few times. And I'm glad you're getting some recognition. I think you should get more, but I just want to thank you for the help. Thanks, Gail. I'd just like to thank the city of Linden for acknowledging my performance and uh, to the uh, InfoCop for recognizing nice. uh, my work performance. And I'll continue to do so going forward. Thank you. Gail. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. We're going to move into ordinances. We had an ordinance continue from May 21st, uh, 2013 meeting. A public hearing was held on ordinance 57-20, police table of organization, and 57-21, fire department table of organization. We asked for a motion to table both until July's meeting. Council President, make a motion to table ordinance 57-20 and seek a second. Second. Mr. Kalbus. Yes. Cozio. Yes. Brown. Yes. Armstead. Yes. Cosby Harling. Yes. Sadowski. Yes. Sheehy. Yes. Yamakaitis. Yes. Medina. Yes. Kaczynski. Yes. Mr. Moore. Yes.
Also from May 21st, 2013, Ordinance uh, 5725, garbage fee. 20, we didn't vote on 21. I'm sorry. Uh, 5721, motion, please. We have to do them separately. Make a motion to table Ordinance 57-21 and ask for a second. Second. Mr. Colbus. Cozio? Yes. Brown? Yes. Armstead? Yes. Cosby Harling? Yes. Sadowski? Yes. Sheehy? Yes. Yamakaitis? Yes. Medina? Yes. Kaczynski? Yes. Mr. Moore? Yes. Also for May 21st, uh, 2013, Ordinance 5725, a garbage fee. Uh, there was a motion to amend and like to know if there is a motion uh, to uh, go forward with the uh, amendment. Mr. President, I'd like to make a motion to table this particular ordinance and request a second. Second. Mr. Colbus. Mr. Colbus, I didn't hear you. Oh. Mr. Cozio? Yes. Brown? Yes. Armstead? Yes. Cosby Harling? No. Sadowski? Yes. Sheehy? Yes. Yamakaitis? Yes. Medina? Yes. Kaczynski? Yes. Mr. Moore? Yes. Motion to table is approved. Witness on hearing. This is the date and time established for the public hearing for ordinances on hearing. Ordinance 5726. An ordinance extending rent control in the city of Linden for the period of April 19th, 2012 to April 18th, 2014. Has the ordinance been properly published and posted? Yes, sir. Have we received any written communication? No, sir. Is there anybody who wishes to speak on the ordinance? Seeing none, I'll ask for a motion. I move that the hearing be closed on Ordinance 5726 and ask for a second. Second. Mr. Colobus? Yes. Cozio? Yes. Brown? Yes. Armstead? Yes. Cosby Harling? Yes. Sadowski? Yes. Sheehy? Yes. Yamakaitis? Yes. Medina? Yes. Kaczynski? Yes. Mr. Moore? Yes. 5723. An ordinance to amend Chapter 7, Traffic, Section 7 12, Parking Time Limited, shall be amended as follows. Add to 7 12.1, two hour parking, Morningside Avenue and Summit Terrace. Delete from 7-15.1D, parking details, summit terrace, add to 7-15.1D, teacher permit parking only, summit terrace. Motion. Uh, has the ordinance been pop properly published and posted? Yes, sir. Have we received any written communication? No, sir. Is there anybody who wishes to be heard on the ordinance? Mr. Sharpie? Three minutes, please. Yes, uh, on these teacher permits, uh, these teacher permits, do you get something from the teacher on this uh, permit? Push that button on. So do I. Push that round button. Red right button. Down, down. That's it. Thank you, sir. Uh, on these uh, teacher permit parking only, uh, do we get money from the teachers for per parking? The permit, Mrs. Zach. Do these teachers pay for their parking on these permits? No, I don't believe so. Why don't they? I'd have to check with the traffic bureau to see if there's any type of. Could they fee be uh, given a fee for the parking, the use of the parking space? I'd have. Actually, Sergeant Popolski is in the audience, if I could ask him. He's a commander for the Traffic Bureau, possibly would know the... No, there's no fee for the Department of Justice. We're going to get in the system for all the time. We're just leaving up the ordinance a little bit in the right location. But they... There's not enough parking. We'll park a lot of force. We'll get the courtesy of the department. Yeah, because uh, the reason I'm questioning that, because there's a contract the board has 
that they're leasing a, a, a current building over here of the Yelks. And us taxpayers are paying for that $10,000, uh, you know, for the lease, you know, under certain things, you know, like teachers when they're hired, they're hired, you know, for me, I know I had to pay for my parking when I parked in the streets over in Elizabeth at a meter or even on the side in front of the school I was working in. But it seems like over here in Linden, the taxpayers are paying for Board of Education is leasing off a club over here. And, you know, that, that's not right. You know, a teacher is given a contract to do the service of teaching in school. One but, minute. you know, as for parking in the streets of Linden, you know, they should have the park in the city all, uh, lot and pay permits into the city. You know, it's just a contract. And, you know, the reason I'm questioning that because us taxpayers pay, pay a lot. You know, and this is what's going on over here in Linden with the Board of Education. They're leasing land instead of having the teachers park on public property or public par uh, parking under Linden. You know, it's just an issue that I have and uh, do our money for office over there in the Board of Ed. I just wanted to bring that up. Thank you. Uh, motion. Council President, I ask that uh, Ordinance 5727 be tabled and continued for next month and seek a second. Thank you. Second. Mr. Colibus? Yes. Cozio? Yes. Brown? Yes. Armstead? Yes. Cosby Harling? Yes. Sadowski? Yes. Sheehy? Yes. Yamakaitis? Yes. Medina? Yes. Kaczynski? Yes. Mr. Moore? Yes. 5727. 28. Bond ordinance authorizing the acquisition of various items of capital equipment for the Linden Police Department, appropriating $841,500 and authorizing the issuance of $799,425,000 in bonds or notes to finance part of the cost. Has the ordinance been properly published and posted? Yes, sir. Have we received any written communication? No, sir. Is there anybody in the audience wish to be heard on the ordinance? Would you come up, please? Three minutes. Uh, Pat here at Weed Chief Food. I just have a question with regard to the CAD software system. Um, back in the day where I used to work, it was computer-assisted drawing. I suspect that's not what it is. Um, in this thing, but could you explain what a CAD software system is and why it's costing us $550,000? Mr. Brown? Yeah. Um, Council President, is, with the permission of Mayor Gabunga, if the Sergeant Wabolski or the police chief can explain this? Yes, the CAD system is basically the, the, soft, the computer software that the police dispatchers use to dispatch fire uh, and police calls. Um, it's also the, the police records management, uh, the fire records management, all of, basically all of the public safety software that we have in the city. Police Chief, how old is this system that we're using right now? I know it's very old. Chief, uh, uh, Councilman Brown asked the existing equipment, how old is it? Uh, the current system that we use is called QED. I would, I would venture to say it's about 20 years old. Um, it's a company that's from Massachusetts. They initially had a lot of customers, a lot of uh, police agencies in New Jersey. Uh, a lot of them have uh, gone on to other vendors. We're one of the few left in New Jersey. And quite honestly, they just they have not kept up with the times. Uh, there's been a lot of new initiatives in New Jersey uh, that QED just has not kept up with. Uh, so it's a very antiquated system right now. Council President. Yes, yeah. Councilman Brown. Yeah, Ms. Hero, I, and I know there, Sergeant Wabolski is here as well, um, and, and he talked more about this during our budget meetings when we talked about this. Um, this is a, I know this seems like a major um, expense, but the way I look at it is this, this is an investment into our public safety. When we talk about public safety, and it's over 20 years old, and what happened with Hurricane Irene and Hurricane Sandy, we found that we had a lot of problems when it came 
to communicating with the public and the public communicating with us and communicating with businesses and vice versa. And what we're trying to do is basically make up for 20 years of a technological gap that we have here, especially with our police department. And when we talk about public safety, this is a major investment that is going to benefit benefit not just the cops that we have on the street, but also Linden residents. And I mean, I know this is a big number, but look at it as far as an investment into public safety. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Motion, please. You got another hand. Another hand. Uh, Ms. Smellick, three minutes, please. Oh, let's see. I just want to ask, the um, two sports vehicles, is that replacing Two existing cars, or is that going to be in addition to what happens that our current is what happens that what we used to do is put two um, cars into the current fund budget every year, and I want to say for the last what two or three years from wrong Alexis or the mayor, we, we didn't put any cars in cars into the current fund budget. So what we did is we put two cars in last month or the month prior to replace the ones that we lost from Hurricane Irene. So that was paid from insurance insurance funds um, but these two SUVs what we found out and it's not the big SUVs that you think of these are vehicles that we can uh, put into our capital fund budget as a far as opposed to our current fund budget these are specialized um, um, police vehicles and what are um, they gonna be used for for regular police patrol regular police and again the mayor and police chief can talk about this but these will be out on the street so this is in addition to what we currently have on the street? This is to replace the older ones that we have. And, and, and like I said, so what it's we replacement made is, vehicles. Huh? Are they're replacement vehicles. Yes. OK. And they're replacing sedans or also the sports utilities. The police chief can talk more chief about that. Chief Schulhafer, uh, would you comment on that? I, I can't say for sure, but I would imagine it would be the sedans. Uh, we leave that up to our municipal garage. They will take off the two highest, highest mileage vehicles that we have in the fleet currently. And do these, uh, do these have more functionality? Can they go on a chase like a regular police car, or they have a special function? Yeah, I mean, for, and the mayor can speak about this, because I know the mayor. Uh, he, he personally looked at these. Yes, we, we test drove, Sergeant Bobolsky test drove these vehicles. They have uh, a, a very good turning radius. They are lower to the ground. They're not up like normal SUVs. And they're also able to have a, a, a far more uh, ability to carry different uh, police equipment in the back. It's, it's a bigger than a normal trunk. And you have to realize that our police vehicles run 24 seven and mo the, the ones that we're gonna retire probably have over 250,000 miles. So you got to constantly replace them because of the 24-7 use. And so we're going to, as we're replacing more of these sedans, we're going to be replacing them with these sports vehicle type things. Or well, this is this, this is my main question was this is a special uh, service that they're providing. It's not necessarily. No, it's not. It's a regular police vehicle. Yeah, this okay. is spe this is specialized. The reason why we did this is because, like I said, years even last year, I don't think we had money in the. We didn't budget any money for police vehicles what we found is that we were lagging these are specialized for police department and the mayor and the police chief mm -hmm. went talked to these people they came mm -hmm. out they gave a demo and what we're trying to do is make up for that lag of years of where we weren't investing in public safety and sports um and i suppose you too i'm sorry in in um police so they have vehicles. A special function yes in these have a special okay. function right, for this. anyone else in the audience wish to make a comment sir Please, uh, state your name, please. Three minutes. Uh, Ed Kaminsky, Maple Avenue. Uh, going back to the software package and, and upgrades, have we uh, talked with the county at all? And the reason why I ask is because I saw a freeholder a couple of months ago, within the last three, four months, indicate that the, the county, with our tax dollars, has invested millions of dollars in a state-of-the-art dispatch system. And they're really, and uh, she even indicated they're looking to get towns on board to use it. So with the millions of dollars invested at the county level and 770000 here, at least the initial costs, I'm wondering if we've had those discussions and at least explored it. And along those lines, do we have a liaison um, to the freeholder board at all? Because at the freeholder meetings, I really don't see anybody from Linden representatives, just to see if we can kind of facilitate uh, these types of opportunities. Council President, I could answer some of that Mr. question. Mayor? 
First of all, we have one of our own on as a freeholder, Chris Hudak, who is in constant touch with myself and this governing body in regards to uh, different uh, functions the county has available to us. We did go and look at their central dispatch uh, with our experts from central dispatch and police department. At the time, we feel that we are are too large a municipality. We have over 12 dispatchers and a large function, and we didn't feel that at this time, uh, with the county just starting out in central dispatch, that it would suit our needs. And that was not my determination. That was the determination of the chief and uh, the experts in, in dispatch. But you also got to realize that this software is only a small part of of the police function, as the chief said, uh, there's the record bureau and, and uh, other other departments in the police department with this software. Thank you. Anyone else in the audience wish to make a statement? If not, motion please. Council President, I make a motion for the passage of ordinance 57-28 and seek a second. Second. <coughs> Mr. Kalbis. Yes. Cozio. Yes. Brown? Yes. Armstead? Yes. Bosby Harling? Yes. Sadowski? Yes. Sheehy? Yes. Yamakaitis? Yes. Medina? Yes. Kaczynski? Yes. Mr. Moore? Yes. 5729. Bond ordinance authorizing various capital improvements for the engineering department, appropriating $605,000 and authorizing the issuance of $380,000 in bonds or notes to finance part of the cost thereof. Has the ordinance been properly published and posted? Yes, sir. Have we received any written communication? No, sir. Is there anybody in the audience who wishes to be heard on the ordinance? Please come up. Three minutes, please. <clears throat> Pat Hero, We Chief Road. Now, I believe it's important to reconstruct curbs and sidewalks. I also believe it is, as I have enjoyed a resurface uh, road, I um, believe it's sometimes necessary to resurface roads. Having said that, it's going to cost us $495,000 this year to do that, and I seem to think that this is generally each year we spend that amount. Couldn't we spend less and just resurface the most dire roads that need to be resurfaced and maybe put some off to the following year? Um, Again, you know, you're, starting, you're saying that we're in really bad financial shape. Well, you start looking at how you can cut back on stuff, not increase the costs to people, cut back on things. And sometimes you just need to cut back on things. So this is one area where I like to think you might want to cut back on instead of having $495,000 in resurfacing. And I believe that the West Brook improvements probably are necessary, and curbs and sidewalks need to be fixed for um, obvious legal reasons. But can we cut down on some of the more lesser needing to be resurfaced roads? Thank you. Council President. Uh, Mr. Brown. Thanks. Yeah, Ms. Hero, I think you've been to some of the budget meetings we went to. Mm -hmm. And when it comes to capital improvement projects, a lot of these that are on here, you know, I, when it comes to our overall budget, it makes up, I want to say, anywhere between 11 to 10 percent of our overall budget. And what, and I think I explained this before, where we try to keep a level. So let's just say if we take this project out, does it have an immediate impact on our budget? Absolutely not. However, what does is when you look at when I talked about that health, insur health insurance workers comp and regular insurance and all the other stuff, that makes up 17 percent of our budget. Within that 17 percent of our budget, when we talk about insurance, we're talking about liabilities. Now. The city of Lind Linden is liable for some of these sidewalks. If we don't fix these sidewalks and someone trips over them, we're talking about lawsuits, which we do have members of the insurance commission will tell you about, cost us a lot of money. So what the city of Linden tries to do is by doing these sidewalk projects, it prevents these lawsuits from happening, which do cost us a lot of money. I wasn't arguing about the sidewalks. I agreed about the sidewalks. I'm talking about the $495,000 in resurfacing. And I might add, Councilman Brown, that only a finance person would think being in debt is a good idea. Most of us don't. Thank you. Uh, can I just say one thing? Mr. Okay, you didn't mention it. But the $55,000, that is 
the engineers coming down and trying to help out Emma Place, the Seventh Ward, and so on. I know you didn't mention it, but that's part of the 55,000. That at least we're getting started on that. No, that's why I said you you didn't yeah you know you didn't mention it, but that's Thank what the 55,000. Thank, Thank you, you, Mr. Sadowski. Anyone else wish to come up, sir? Three minutes. Uh, resurfacing uh, streets. Is Washington Avenue on that for the street, uh, Councilman First Ward? Resurfacing of uh, streets. Is Washington Avenue on this, Councilman Calvis? I can answer that. Washington Avenue is on this. Washington Avenue. Okay, thank East you. Henry. Motion, please. President, I ask that Ordinance 5729 be moved and adopted and seek a second. Second. Mr. Kalbis. <clears throat> Koziel? Yes. Brown? Yes. Armstead? Yes. Cosby Harling? Yes. Sadowski? Yes. Sheehy? Yes. Yamakaitis? Yes. Medina? Yes. Kaczynski? Yes. Mr. Moore? Yes. 5730. An ordinance to amend and supplement Chapter 7, Traffic, shall be amended as follows, 7-33, Handicap Parking Regulations, 7-33.1a, Handicap Parking on Street, Delete 315 West Stimson Avenue. Has the ordinance been properly published and posted? Yes, sir. Have we received any written communication? No, sir. Is there anyone in the chamber who wishes to be heard on the ordinance? Seeing none, I ask for a motion, please. Uh, I make a move to approve Ordinance 5730 and ask for a second. Second. Mr. Calvis. Yes. Cozio. Yes. Brown. Yes. Armstead. Yes. Cosby Harling. Yes. Sadowski. Yes. Sheehy. Yes. Yamakaitis. Yes. Medina. Yes. Kaczynski. Yes. Mr. Moore. Yes. 5731. Um, 5731, bond ordinance uh, uh, providing an appropriation of $1 million for financing a portion of the cost of a redevelopment project located on St. George's Avenue and authorizing the issuance of $950,000 in bonds or notes to finance part of the cost. Mr. Clerk, has the ordinance been properly published and posted? Yes, sir. Have we received any written communication? No, sir. Is there anybody in the chamber who wishes to be heard on the ordinance? Ms. Hero, would you please come up? Three minutes, please. After the last vote, sometimes I wonder whether I'm doing any good by being up here. But then I look at 57-31 and I realize I do. You see, if you had listened to me back when they originally had the Morning Star project, and I said that I did not approve of that Morning Star project, and I think that I should not have, uh, you should not have continued with it, and yet you did, I would have saved you at this point one million dollars. And that's not including all the property taxes we've lost in that time period from buildings and businesses that were erect that we were getting property taxes from that are no longer, businesses are no longer in business and buildings that no longer we are getting property tax from. So I would have saved, and plus legal fees, so I would have saved you a lot of money. Um, this is an obvious reason why, as I've said time and time again, government does not belong in the redevelopment business, and I think government should stop being in the redevelopment business, and maybe you do have to vote to approve this because you have to tear down the remaining buildings, but maybe when you start hearing me over and over again say that government doesn't belong in the redevelopment business, you'll realize that you could have saved at least a million dollars right here by not being in the redevelopment business. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Anyone in the audience in the chamber wishes to make a comment on the ordinance? Seeing none, I ask for a motion, please. Council President, I ask for the passage of Ordinance 57-21 and ask for a second. Second. Mr. Calvis. Yes. Cozio. Yes. Brown. Yes. Armstead, Cosby Harling, no. Sadowski, no. 
Sheehy? No. Yamakaitis? Yes. Medina? Yes. Kaczynski? Yes. Mr. Moore? Yes. 57.32. Bond ordinance providing an appropriation of $45,900 for the purchase and conversion of a van into an animal control transport vehicle for the Board of Health Department and authorizing the issuance of $43,605 in bonds or notes to finance part of the cost thereof. Thank you. Uh, has it, Mr. Clerk, has the ordinance been properly published and posted? Yes, sir. Have we received any written communication? No, sir. Is there anybody in the chamber who wishes to be heard on the ordinance? Mr. Sharpie, three minutes, please. Uh, yes. Uh, this van that they have, you know, 45000 I could go out and buy a brand new one for that. You know, and I'm pretty sure you can buy one for like thirty-five. You know, you're converting. Conversion, that means that van is going to get a top put on it for $45,000. That's a lot of money. If you got a van, you're just going to put a cab on top of it and $45,000 on top of a van you're and convert fine. it. That's a lot of money. You can go out and buy a brand new one with this, the same thing for about $35,000. Especially a box of your, you know, that's a lot of money to convert a van, put a cab on top of it for $45,000. Come on. I've seen animal control things. You put, you get a pickup truck. You put a cab on top of it. Forty-five thousand dollars. Come on, guys. That's a lot of money. I, it's, it's a man. Table. That's too much. Anybody in the chamber wishes to uh, make a comment? Seeing no other motion, please. Mr. Council President, I would like to make a motion for the passage of Ordinance 5732 and seek a second. Second. <coughs> Mr. Collins. Yes. Coziel. No. Brown. Yes. Armstead. Yes. Cosby Harling. Yes. Sadowski. Yes. Sheehy. No. Yamakaitis. Yes. Medina. Yes. Kaczynski. Yes. Mr. Moore. No. I'd like to uh, waver from the agenda for a moment and uh, ask uh, Eleanor Conrad to come up. Uh, I understand she's here and we have a presentation for her. Mr. Mayor, would you uh, do the honors? I also, besides having the honor of giving a resolution to Gail, our parking enforcement officer, it, it, it's truly an honor for me, not only as the mayor of the city of Linden, but as a neighbor to Eleanor Conrad, who lives across the street from me for 40 years. She's been a school crossing guard for 49 years in the city of Linden, crossing generation after generation of our children. And she started with $1.65 an hour. So she's come a long way in those 49 years because now she's making $17 an hour. <laughs> but I would like the chief to read the proclamation because if anybody deserves it for longevity and, and dedication to our kids in, in the city of Linden, it's Eleanor. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, this resolution reads, whereas Chief of Police Henry Tomaszewski and Lieutenant Kenneth Perkin, Traffic Bureau Commander, hired Eleanor Conrad as a crossing guard on November 16, 1964. And whereas 
since she has served under six chiefs of police and seven traffic bureau commanders longer than any crossing guard in the city of Linden. And whereas Eleanor Conrad began her long career at the corner of Washington Avenue and Gibbon Street, then she served for over 20 years at the corner of Wood Avenue and Curtis Street. Since 2004, she has stood guard at the corner of Princeton Road and Stile Street, and this year her post was at the corner of Penbrook and Valley. And whereas Eleanor Conrad has crossed three generations of Linden children with great diligence, as witnessed by her exemplary attendance record, and whereas during her 49 years of service to the city of Linden, there was never a complaint filed against her. And whereas Eleanor Conrad, over her 49 years of service, watched over the children of Linden with devotion and dedication, as if everyone was a member of her family. And whereas Eleanor Conrad has submitted her resignation as a crossing guard, effective June 21st, 2013. Now therefore be it resolved by the mayor and council of the city of Linden that they extend their heartfelt gratitude to Eleanor Conrad for her outstanding years of service to the residents and children of Linden and wish her many years of health and happiness. And be it further resolved that this resolution be entered in the minutes of the council of the city of Linden in perpetual recognition of her compassion and faithful dedication of Eleanor Conrad to the residents of Linden, and that a copy be presented to her in recognition of the foregoing. And this resolution is signed by President of Council James Moore and Mayor Richard Gabunka. Thank you. I just want to say that I, I enjoy my time working for the city. Everyone is very nice, but the thing I didn't enjoy was the rain and the snow. So now when somebody's working, I'm going to be in bed and nice and warm and cozy. And I thank you all again. Oh. Uh, ask for a motion uh, to ask for a recess to go into executive session for uh, a little while. We have a motion on the floor for a recess. Motion to go into executive session. Request a second. 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 Uh, it's Mr. Colbus. Yes. Cozio. Yes. Brown. Armstead? Yes. Cosby Harling? Yes. Sadowski? Yes. Sheehy? No. Yamakaitis? Yes. Medina? Yes. Kaczynski? Yes. Mr. Moore? Yes. The motion to recess for an executive session is approved. Mr. Clerk, take the roll. The City Council was in executive session for the purpose of discussing certain personnel matters. Roll call, please. Mr. Colibus? Yes. Cozio? Here. Brown? Here. Armstead? Here. Cosby Hurling? Here. Sadowski? Here. Sheehy? Here. Yamakaitis? Here. Medina? Here. Kaczynski? Here. Mr. Moore? Here. Uh, I'd like to go back to the motion uh, in reference to the uh, 5725. Mr. Armstead. Mr. Armstead. 
time stay you take yes mr president earlier this evening we moved to table ordinance 5725 um, I I'm making a motion to take it off the table and request a second. Second. Okay. This is on to remove 5725 from the table. Mr. Colibus. Yes. Cozio. Yes. Brown. Yes. Armstead. Yes. Cosby Harling. Yes. Sadowski. Yes. Sheehy. Yes. Yamakaitis? Yes. Medina? Yes. Kaczynski? Yes. Mr. Moore? Yes. Mr. Armstead? Right on it, right off the table. Yes, sir. I move for approval of ordinance. Any uh, discussion on 5725? Anybody wish to be heard from the public? Please come up. Please come up. Mr. President, yes. I also have a um, letter to read on this ordinance. Dear Mayor and Council, just remind all that each of you took an oath of office to represent each of your wards and together you represent Linden's residents. Two of you took an oath of office to represent all of Linden. This additional tax, and that's what it, that is what it is to pick up garbage is outrageous. We pay property taxes for, for our service. Our DPW workers pick up from business that has, that has more garbage than most households. Maybe you should go after all the businesses that get picked up and charge them. Just to name two, Post 91 and Deli King. To charge f for one family or two family different amounts, what about the illegal homes that have four and five families living in them? When you charge an apartment building, the tenant rent will be increased. Now you're putting additional burdens on the renters that barely are making it also. Linden residents cannot afford to pay any more. They are tapped out. People are living, leaving their homes. Some are in foreclosure and some are being short sale. On a personal note, I almost lost my home two years ago and I am not about to let you or anyone else have me lose it because you do not know how to budget um, our, the taxpayer's money. I have asked numerous times to stop spending. Now look where we are. You want to put safety at risk by laying off police officers. You want, you went after the firemen and again, want to lay off DPWs. Come on, what about this? Do, do what Councilman Peter Brown did. All the council take a 10% pay cut. That matter, why, why don't, for that matter, why don't anyone make the figure take a 10% cut? I know right now I am being laughed at and cursed, but you know what? I don't really care. Not one of you uh, pay my taxes or my mortgage or anyone else's. Most, if not all of you, your council salaries is a second or third salary coming into your homes. Many Linden residents have a single check or social security or unemployment or living off of savings coming into their homes. You say, lead by example, well, here is your chance. You want to lay off firemen, policemen, or DPW. What about laying off city hall workers or supervisors or department heads? The only time city hall workers get touched was to get rid of part-timers, and yet there are still part-timers there. So if you were to put this to a vote on a ballot, I can guarantee you the vote would be no by the taxpayers, not charge for the garbage pickup or put, out, or put our public safety at risk. Honestly, I wish I could be there to deliver this in person, but previous engagements that I cannot rearrange are preventing me from doing so. But I will not be happy, I, but I will be happy to talk to any one of you. Vote no to the additional charge for garbage. Thank you, Patty Murgo, Greer Avenue. Have we received any other written communications? No, sir. Is there anybody in the chamber wishes to be heard on the ordinance? Which come up, sir? Three minutes, please. John Principano, 1706 Westover Road. <clears throat> I think there's other ways that we can come up with to uh, 
to cut this deficit. I don't know what they are, but I'm sure that if we put all well, put our heads together, we can come up with something better than a new tax, which is what this is. It's going to be a new tax. I myself pay over $14,000 for my property taxes on my home, just my personal residence. Okay, it's a one-family house. It's a decent-sized house. But $14,000 for one property that doesn't bring me in any money is a lot of money. And for me to pay an extra 25, 30, whatever it is that you want us to pay per month, it's ridiculous. The reason I stayed in Linden is because I work in Linden and I want to spend my money in Linden, okay? And I spend a lot of my money in Linden. I don't feel like I need to be taxed any more than I am. What is the incentive for me to stay here? You tell me that. Because I don't have to stay in the city of Linden. What is the incentive for me to stay here? There are people in Clark, probably up to Madison Hill Road, that don't pay as much as I do in taxes. Okay? It's ridiculous. We've got to do something. We've got to put our heads together. We've got to bring businesses into this city. If we have to hire somebody to bring rateables into this city, that's what we need to do. Something, whatever we're doing is not working. We need to do something, okay? I don't have the answers. I don't have all the answers, but I'll be willing to give any help I can to come up with something. But this is not the thing to come up with. And furloughing $10 an hour workers is not the thing to come up with either. Furloughing, furloughing the lowest paid uh, people in, the city, in this city, it's not going to help. These people aren't going to be able to pay their mortgages. We have to bring business into this city. We have to make it, uh, 30 seconds. Make it so people want to be here, OK? I know everybody is in agreement with me. I'm, not, I'm sure I'm speaking for a lot of people in this city that couldn't come here to, to say what I'm saying. But this is not the answer, okay? And I think that it, you'll find out when it's time for re-election, if you vote this, you're gonna see what happens. You will not be re-elected. Thank you. Anybody in the chamber wishes to make a comment on 5725? Would you please come up? Mr. Sharpie? Yes. Three now, minutes, please. If this passes, will it be just for the year that we're going to be in, or is this going to be beyond this year? Is this just to get us out through 13, 14? Mr. Zach? Uh, you know, this ain't going to be every year we get into this budget situation. Is this just going to be for one year or two? Please give us the answer. Mrs. Zack, could you answer Mr. Sharpie's question? Will this be for one year or two years? Please give me an answer. Will this $10 fee be just for one year or two years? It has to be in an ordinance how long this is going to be. If this is an ordinance, it must be put in there, Mr. Hodak. Don't start about uh, Mr. it. What Mr. Shoppe, you are incorrect. It is an ordinance. Once it's in place, it's in place to a future governing body amends it or changes it. But what term of years? How many years? Until they change it. The government body changes uh, January the 1st, as far as I know. You know, uh, you got to tell the people how long this ordinance is going to go in, on for existence. One year, two years, three years? Please tell the people. It, this is a situation where we're in a desperate... For this year coming into, yes. But you can't go beyond this budget a year. We don't know what the future is going to be, do we? Council President. Mr. Brown. You know, you just can't put this Paul, on here and say Paul, it's going to be forever. Paul, you just said it yourself. 
we don't know what the future is going to be. Right. What you're asking for is you're saying set a time limit, right? Yes. One year, Yet, two years. All right. One year, two year, not knowing what the future is. Right. Correct? So therefore, if we find ourselves in this position three years from now or four years from now, what are we going to do? Well, then you have to come up with variables are supposed to be coming in, uh, development Paul, coming in. Paul, I asked you that question because rather than type about one, talk one, hypothetical, one person. What, what we have been, I mean, I'm tired and our financial planners here. We're looking at projections, we're looking at numbers. We've been going over this as, as early as what, I think 10 o'clock this morning today, going over future budget projections on mm -hmm. where we're gonna be at. So, so, so Paul, when you're coming up here and asking us, you know, put a time limit, we can't put a time limit if we don't know where we're gonna be three, four, five years from now. This is the problem that happened in the past when, you know, we didn't have a five-year plan. So I understand what you're saying. Yeah. But that is being worked on. Like here, we got 46 employees leaving. Now, are you going to rehire 46 people? No. Okay. Paul, we've been downsizing. Okay. Well, All right. Thank you for your comments. Uh, people in the audience wish to make any comments? And we keep it to three minutes, please. Mr. Mayor, I have to go directly now to Mr. Peter, Peter Brown. For the record. For the record. Your name. Henry Mack. Let the record be clear that I have to speak to the mayor and Mr. Peter Brown. And this is a extremely short notice for me to bring the peoples. I made several phone calls immediately to the peoples to let them be aware that I have authorization from the leadership of the community to say to you, Mr. Mayor and Mr. Peter, we want to ask you to take this situation back to conference and rediscuss it amongst yourselves because the people, it's not clear exactly where we're going. I immediately hit the ground when I saw this and heard of this. I hit the ground to ask you, what do y'all think? They said, we have no idea. No, it did not hit the market tonight. No, it didn't hit the market. It was not explained to the people, Mr. Mayor and Mr. Peter. I hope you, 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 Mr. Mayor and Peter, I want the people to be crystal clear on what your intentions are. I will respectfully ask y'all to close this until you meet with the people. Let each council member of this city, are we clear on that now? Let's be clear on that. I want the council members, each and every council member to go to your community and y'all then let the community decide. Don't you dare, they told me to tell you. You, don't you dare have the audacity to make a decision for them. Thank you, sir. Are we clear on that? Thank you. Anybody in the chambers wish to make comment on uh, 5725? Three minutes, please. Jean Maria Brigida, with regard to the time frame that people are asking how long this is going to be in effect, this is only, you're only going to be allowed to do this until it comes before the assembly. Once it comes before the assembly, Speaker Sylvia Oliver, and if this passes, the governor ex post facto is going to kick in and then you're not going to be able to charge this. When I attended the budget meeting last night for the first time, it was extremely insightful. The meeting I felt was somewhat productive except towards the end of the meeting, right before the executive session, when each council member asked Walter and the other gentlemen about work in their ward that still has not been attended to. Whether it's debris or a problem with dirt flowing into a sewer, it was excuse after excuse and lack of follow-up. Some of you expressed these issues have been going on for months or longer. Why, why do you tolerate this? 
Where is the accountability? Walter gave you your answer, not enough men. This is why the city really needs to examine the benefit and cost savings of privatizing sanitation. I'm only talking trash and garbage, nothing else. This way men could, under these circumstances, attend to other items that need to be addressed. If you don't want to pri privatize, then reduce the scheduling during the holidays to one pickup and allow the other day for the sanitation to address each of your concerns in your wards that have not been performed. When I speak here, sometimes I feel like what I'm saying is meaningless. There's no change. Is this just a mental game? And the question of summer help was brought up by the DPW. Are you kidding? Are we looking to spend more money? My slogan for the surcharge, if it has to go through, is either cap it or forget it. And the residents need to know also that if they don't pay this, there's going to be a lien put on their property. But I really think there's, we can come to an agreement, take some suggestions, but it seems here nobody wants to make change. You don't make change, we're going to go further and further in the red. I don't, I don't know what it takes, but listening to each of you last night, except for maybe one council member, I could not sleep when I got home last night because I could not believe what you go through to try to get something accomplished. It's like you have to plead and beg. It's disgusting. It's disgraceful. I pay $13,000 in property taxes. I have one income. I don't have a dual income. You need to think about the people, because like the gentleman said, when it comes time for election, it's, there's going to be a change. We can't continue to operate this way. And the part about the police and the 30 men who wanted to be laid off, I don't know what man or woman in his right mind would want to be laid off from the police department. I'm starting to think then there's something wrong. That's it. Mr. President. Mr. Thornstead. I, I just want to address the aspect of uh, that you mentioned uh, privatizing. What many people don't understand, uh, the, the decision, if we have to make that decision to privatize, it's going to be a lot more, uh, more of a burden on the homeowner than was actually being proposed here with the um, $10 per month fee. Um, because uh, the, the numbers are just outrageous. And you lose control once you privatize. I came from Bergen County. We had privatized sanitation. Okay. It's not a burden. It was for garbage and trash every Thursday. You could put your trash out. No problem. You didn't have this accumulation. Here you guys want to eliminate trash. If my toilet bowl, which went a few months ago, am I supposed to keep it as a flower plant holder and keep it on the side of my property until the next trash day? When the sewer backs up and I got to replace my rugs, which, ha which has happened to me, am I supposed to just keep that? But when I'm not saying if, if you don't want to privatize, fine, then change the schedule. When it's a holiday, each one of you complained about something in your ward. You were par practically begging. Why? Why can't you get this accomplished? You have to be friends with somebody to get it done? No. It should be done. There should be accountability. There should be a deadline. So if they can't get it done because they don't have enough men, then take those holidays. Instead of the two pickups during that week, make it one. And on the other day, let them attend to all the issues in your ward that have not been addressed or picked up. It'll give them time. And as far as privatizing, I'm saying do a pilot program. I'm not saying just right away do privatized and get rid of all our trucks. In three yes. minutes, Rep. I, I'm going to allow Mr. Brown to You have comment. insurance. You have liability, you have workman's comp, you have um, fuel, you have the expensive salaries. You can't tell me to get that off our payroll and budget and put it on to a private company that that's not saving us a significant amount of money and the repairs for these trucks. Comment from Mr. Brent. Okay. I, I was going to wait until everyone spoke, but since you brought up the idea of private, privatizing public um, sanitation and trash, I think what a lot of people are focusing on is that when we talk about and what they call a tax fee, it's, it's, I'm not focused on the word, is that everyone's focused on that it's just dealing with trash and garbage. 
what people, and I want people to understand, is that we're talking about public works and offsetting some of these services. Now, Linden, when, for the last couple of months, people came up, Linden provides these services, provides these services, you're right. We provide these services, which everyone's right, it's in their tax bill, where other municipalities don't. So I'll give you a perfect example. You talk about trash pickup, you go to Scotch Plains, which is in Union County, you have to pay $97 for your application fee just to remove $750 worth of trash. In Linden, we remove your trash 14, four times a year, and you're not capped at it. Other towns, um, I think you're paying anywhere between 25 to about $50 a month to remove trash, I mean to remove garbage. In Linden, it's in your tax bill. Now, take trash and garbage outside. If we privatize public works, here's some of the other services that we all enjoy the benefits of. Trees, we mm -hmm. all like these trees to be trimmed. If we eliminate public works, guess what? We have to go, no, no, Excuse but ma'am, no. let me finish. Because this, I don't want to eliminate public but ma'am, this, this, it goes hand in hand. You can't, no, private, ma'am, we've went over this. I went over this today with their attorneys, I went over this. You're telling me it's not, but the reality is this is what happens is that it's a snowball effect. It's not as easy as saying we're gonna privatize sanitation. This is happening all over the state where it is a snowball effect. So let me finish and let me tell you what's going with public works. One is trees. We have to go out there and go out and bid that. We lose control over that. So the days of when you call public works or call a council person and come to a tree, those days are gone. Sidewalks, when we repair those sidewalks, whether it's a crack or anything else like that, that's gone, where, you know, where, where we have to go out and still bid that. Sewer services, the benefit where residents will call when their sewers are backed up, we either have to increase that fee to cover the cost of people coming out or eliminate that. The, back, the, the emergency services that a public works department does right now, cleaning those sewers, we would have to go out there and bid those services as well. That would be an additional cost. Um, um, trash collection, I already talked about that, where we would have to start charging for that a separate fee to, to, to incur those. Um, when we talk about leaf, leaf removal, I know a couple of years ago we talked about bagging leaves. That was a very unpopular idea, but we've seen that some municipalities bag leaves in order to try to save money in some way. Um, again, eliminating public works. If we don't have people to do um, pick up trash and, and, and pick up garbage, those trucks are useless. Guess what? When we talk about, I, I mentioned this before, snow plowing, we have to go out there and bid that. That, again, is more expensive. Road repair work, graffiti removal, cleaning Wood Avenue. Right now, we clean, the city of Linden cleans Wood Avenue, which is under the control of SID at no additional cost. So what we would have to do is start charging SID to clean Wood Avenue, which would then eliminate the funds that they have to beautify um, Wood Avenue. Trash, uh, I mean, um, um, grass removal, what other towns do is that you have to actually take your grass after you cut it and go dump it, your, dump it yourselves. Um, the closure of the recycling center. Some municipalities eliminate um, the hours of the, of the recycling center during the week and have it only on, on Saturday, Saturdays and Sundays. And there's other things that Public Works does. Now, you're, you're disagreeing me with this, but I guess one thing I want to make it very clear, everyone's saying there has to be another way. For the last, what, since January, we're looking at different ways. We're getting surveys of other towns. We're looking at where could we cost, uh, cut costs here? What are we spending money on? Unless anybody else can tell me real numbers, this is what we've looked at that's happening, what other towns are doing. And, and, and I mean, we have our financial planner here who, who works for the city. Uh, one of his, his um, employees came in and told us today, he says, my town itself eliminated our public works going to private and is privatizing. You mentioned Bergen County. How many years ago was that when, when they were, um, um, did you live there? Nowadays, 37 years. 37 years. I guarantee you go there now. The no, right no, there. no. Just recently my mom sold her house in Bergen County. And are they paying for trash? No. Are they paying for uh, no, garbage neither. removal? But man, no. well, what I'm trying to tell you is that this is not an issue where it's simple, simple as saying removing, removing, let me finish, as, as, as removing uh, uh, this, privatizing that, and changing the schedules. Because the reality is we're $5.2 million over the cap this year. And we know that we're going to have the same problem next year. So if we get, the, so when we talk about furloughs, so we talk about eliminating positions, that only helps us this year, these furloughs, as a one-time expense reduction. Next year, we're in the same problem. Okay. With regard to, I did not say eliminate public works. I said to see about garbage and trash. There are haulers that like waste management and others that will just take garbage. Do you and know trash. how much that would cost? It, hold on a second. It, when you factor in the cost of these trucks, 
the repair, the salaries, the liability, the insurance. Somebody needs to sit there with a calculator and figure out, do the math. It's savings. And, and then, that's what I'm trying to but, tell you. We have done these. Unless you can tell me where the numbers are okay, coming well, from. Okay, well, I don't have access to your numbers, And this so is what I I'm trying to tell you. I, okay, but I came from another county, another city. And unless you lived here all your life, which some people have, you don't know and haven't experienced other city life. I don't know your background. But I what I know. do know is that the city of Linden used to have a landfill where we used to dump our trash at no additional cost and, said that. and bring in that. Those days are gone. Okay. As a result, forget forget just a simple um, 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 employees, right? Take that factor out. It costs us over $700,000 just to dump trash. And what does it now, cost if I look us at, with the health insurance now, now, at 100% with no contribution? But, man, what you're saying is that privatized public works, right? I mean, you said privatized of trash course. and garbage, right? Correct. Right now, we're down to 85 guys. So you're saying keep those guys? So then the cost of insurance well, you, is not changing. You Are you saying lay off those guys? You complain? No. I, you, remember in the board meeting, I said not lay you off. They use them for other things. They, I'm sure they have other talents and other things they could attend to. Why was each one of you complaining last night that something in your ward wasn't getting done? Why? I'll be honest with you. It wasn't Why? a matter of complaining. We, I, I'll be honest uh, with you. Really? The public you got frustrated last night? About what? Like it, had nothing to do, it has nothing to do with public works. And I've come up here and we've all said it publicly. We're public works. Our public works department is the best in the state, especially after Sandy. The work that they did in the state was excellent. However, uh, Mr. we Brown, just I like, think, uh, but, but let me finish, Jim. Is that I'm sorry if anybody here came off saying that we were complaining. Is that we, like everybody else here, want something done yesterday? And I have no gripes with our public works department because of the hard work that they do. And if it takes them a day or two to get something done, I have no problem. I've personally helped them out and cut grass uh, be, be, because of the shortage. Thank but you. nevertheless. I want to make it very clear is that if we privatize our trash and garbage. Thank you, sir. It's, it, it's, it's not the solution. We've ran these numbers. We have, and again, so I've, for the last couple of months, we've had our financial planners come in and help us. What is our cash flow analysis? Give us our budget, budget production, budget production budget projections for the next couple of years. Alexis will talk about where we've even looked at an analysis as far as how many employees in public works we had a couple of years and where do we have them, uh, where, where we stand at today. Rich Colsey here, he's a, he was in charge of reconsolidating um, public works and, and um, recreation where, yes, we are short men power in, in public works, but then we're having the um, people in recreation help out. This is not as simple as privatizing, thinking that this is going to solve the problem. Okay, last comment. Without, let's say we don't privatize. We, there's no benefit to it at all. Nobody wants to change the schedule either. So I guess basically us residents coming up to the podium expressing suggestions or whatever is going on deaf ears because you know what without change you're not going to be able Ma to Ma'am, it's not going on deaf ears and no one said that they're against changing the schedule well guess but what i was here last time and jack she he said it's the same schedule for how many years nobody wants to change it the, the, people need a reality check or need to wake up and i explain I'm and i done. think and it's, i think jack explained thank you very much nothing. Anybody in the audience in the chamber wishes to speak on uh, 5725? Please come up. Three minutes, please. Make this real simple for you. Vote no on this. However, to give you some reasons why I've already spoken twice about this in previous things. But I want to let you know what you're doing to the people in the community, the people that I speak for. Uh, this is Robert Kennedy. For there's another kind of violence, slower but just as deadly, destructive as the shot or the bomb in the night. This is the violence of institutions, indifference and inaction and slow decay. This is the violence that afflicts the poor. This is a slow destruction of a child by hunger and schools without books and homes without heat in the winter. This is what you're depriving people of. Sure, some of you have families that are getting very, very rich and wealthy, considering all things considered from our property taxes. But then there are the rest of us. We're like the 99%, and we look at some of you like the 1%, and we're hurting out there. No, I'm, I have a speech to make, and I'm going to make it. You can speak after I'm totally finished. You know, it is very hard for us. You say the situation is dire. You don't know how dire it is for some of us. 
How many of us have given up meals? How many of us have given up medicine? How many of us have given up the simple place, things of life? We think of the, you think of the cost of living. We can't afford to live. We can just barely afford to exist. This is a statement from Jesus. For they bind heavy burdens and grievous to be born and lay them on men's shoulders, but they themselves will not move them with one of their fingers. Whereas it has long been known and declared that the poor have no right to the property of the rich, I wish it also to be known and declared that the rich have no right to the property of the poor, and you have taken far too much of our property in unfair property taxes. To quote, um, that was by John Ruskin, by the way, that quote. To quote my necessary endings by Dr. Henry Cloud, the copy after urgency comes sustainability. Living in New Jersey is not getting to be sustainable for a lot of us. Even someone I know who's a county employee is talking about getting out of New Jersey when she retires because she can't afford to retire there. You want a state where we can afford to retire in. Most of us can't afford to retire in. I'm not sure how much longer I can afford to live in the state of New Jersey. And Charles Darwin seconds, said, please. can you just finish? 30 seconds. If the misery of the poor be caused not by the laws of nature, but by our institutions, great is our sin. That's Charles Darwin. And great is your sin if you vote. And yes, on this, and vote to charge fees for our garbage. No, I'm not for privatizing garbage. I believe there is a right for government employees and public service in the DPW. But I'm totally against you voting yes on this. So vote this down now Thank and help support much. the poor. Thank you for your time. Is anybody else in the chamber, chamber wishing? Mr. Brown? Ms. Hero, you talk about what doing what's right. And and, and here's what's, in, in my opinion, no one here wants to pass this. No one here is looking to do this. And you know what? I pay property taxes just like everybody else on council here pay property taxes. My family lives here, and this is going to affect me just as the same. However, here's the reality of it. We have two options. Is that we have to have some type of recurring revenue or we eliminate these services. I just made a list of more, forget trash and garbage. I mentioned trees, sidewalks, sewer services, street sweeping, um, leaf removal, snow, salting, de-icing, road work, graffiti removal, cleaning wood avenue. Um, we mentioned, I, never, I didn't mention the landfill, grass collection, uh, septic system on Range Road, OEM, a lot of our public works employees help out with OEM, parks and grass, ma uh, parks and grass maintenance, closure of the recycling center, calls from police and fire where our public works helps out with that as well. Um, and Sandy and Hurricane Irene, so what a tremendous job that these guys did. Now, it's a matter of doing what's right. Do I eliminate, do the council eliminate these services or do we try to find a way to offset it and pro still provide these services? And again, these are services that other towns don't even have or the ones that they do, some of the bare minimum as far as trash and garbage removal, they are paying a steep fee for it. Ms. Happier, you spoke, let me finish. Now, with that being said, that's just public works. Alan, the one reason why we're in executive session, because Alan, our labor attorney, explained it very clearly. If we don't pass this, doing what's right, talk about it from a public safety standpoint, we're gonna have to lay off a massive amount of cops. Ms. Here, you want cops out in the street, I want cops out in the street. How are we going to pay for this? Or how are we going to pay for these firefighters? How are we going to pay for the public safety if we don't have a reoccurring revenue coming, coming, uh, coming in? It's very easy for anyone to say, don't do this. But what I would like for, for someone to come up and give me an alternative, uh, because the reality is, is, is we're in a situation here where we either cut all these services that you enjoy and everybody else and that I enjoy or we have to bring in some type of recurring revenue. I so I would like for, and, and I'm sorry, what I would like for me to hear from you is what is your alternative? What is your solution? First of all, I am in favor of, and by the way, I just want to announce to everybody because you might not know, library services are being cut, okay? So needless to say, I'm taking a massive hit with that one too. But I'm not going to complain about it because I know we're in tough times, budget times. What I was in favor of, I'm in favor of cutting recreation, the centers, keep them open like maybe 
like one recreation center, half a day, the other recreation, half a day. What if you want me to say that in public? I just said it in public. I have said it in private, though, to several council people. How I like to take garbage maybe down to one time a week. I know for some of us that would be hard, but maybe we'd be willing to sacrifice that. But paying, no. Maybe, for example, tree trimming. Maybe we should charge people if they want their tree trimmed. Maybe that's an option. But you know what? For something like a mandatory $10 or now, I understand we were talking 50, I've heard through the grapevine we were talking 15, maybe we're not talking 15, maybe we're still talking 10, but who knows, maybe next year, you'll want the reincurring revenue so much next year, you'll make it 15. Who knows? Mr. Brown, let me put it this way. You're an expert on finance. Anybody can look for a way to increase revenues by charging us more. I was hoping that you would start cutting more. Ms. Thank you. Ms. Hero, I have cut, and I can give you a list of ways that we have cut. Now, like you said, increasing revenue, you mentioned charging for trees. Where does it stop? I can do it, you could do a $10 a month fee where you still get any services, or we can do, let's give you a perfect example. I just said it, going from sewer cleanup, going from, when, when, when we do the calls right now, going from 100 to 300. We can go through a list of services we provide in nickel and dime residents. So now you start charging for tree service, you start cleaning Meaning you start charging for sewer service, you start charging for, for, for every but little thing. But like I thing. said, Ms. where Hero, does it you, stop? Exactly, Ms. Hero. When does it stop? Or you do a simple $10 a month fee, service charge, or whatever you want to keep these same services. And I, again, I ask you, where do we get this money to close in this $5.2 million? And I'm, I'm here, I would like to hear your suggestion, because all you told me was tree trimming right now, charging for tree and trimming. other things, I had a copy of the budget, which I don't have now. I'm saying, do we have to spend, just because the department gives us a list of everything they want, do we have to give them everything? Do we have to buy all their equipment? Do we have to do this? Granted, I'm not talking about computers, okay? So let's leave that off the table. But I am saying there's a lot of stuff they ask for that we may not need or want, or maybe we could put it off another year. Can you give That's me an the kind example? of thing you're looking at. No, I can't because I don't have the information in front of me, but we talked about it, I believe, at the first and second Mr. ward meeting, and I uh, believe uh, at the third I ward meeting. I've got to interrupt you because. Uh, I've given you double time. Here. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else in the chamber wishes to make comment on 5725? Council President, appropriate time, I want to make a comment. Thank you. Mr. Mary, would you like to go first? Would you like to go first? State your name for the My name is John Roman. I live on Union Street. Three minutes, please. I'm sorry? Three minutes, please. Okay. Um, I was going to keep quiet, but I can't any longer. I've lived in Linden all 25 years. When I was growing up in Sunnyside, my father said to me, John, you can, you know, be a public employee, work for the government, or you can go to school, get a bachelor's degree, go into the private sector. I chose to go get a bachelor's degree, work in the private sector, because I wanted to make a lot of money. I wanted to work for a good firm, whatever I wanted to do. But he told me, he said, if you go into the public, you're not going to make that good of money, but you're going to have these amazing benefits that are going to take care of you and your family for the rest of your life. This town has 96 employees making over $100,000. Mr. Brown, I don't know if you're allowed to disclose, how much do you make? From the city of Linden, seventeen one. No, less than that. I didn't have a pay cut. After before taxes, whatever. No, no, that's less what the that. regular salaries. I make less. Okay. Anyone else want to divulge your salaries? I'm, I mean, there's millions of dollars right up here. Council I mean, President. if we're sitting here and we have to get charged an extra ten dollars, my father, who's disabled. Who has, who has a broken neck and can't, I have to hand them the 120 or $180, whatever you guys charge us. While, while there's people in this town making $150,000, 140, 130, 96 people make over 100 grand. Well, I, my father was so wrong, man. He didn't see that one coming, huh? I should have went and been a public employee because then I could got paid the big bucks and I could have the best benefits. So you want to find the money you need, 96 employees make over 100 grand. That's immediately at least 9.6 million. Cut that by 15%. Thank you. 
There's a good chunk of change, huh? That might actually almost clear it up right there. Is that you're gonna charge the businesses in this city? 30, 40, 50 dollars a month? You guys wanna bring rateables in? <laughs> you wanna bring rateables in? You wanna put people in that big building you built back there? You wanna put build people there? And yet you're just gonna say, hey, by the way, extra 700 a year. We need it. Mr. Mayor, you have a comment? Thank you, Council President. For people that don't know, our antiquated charter for the city of Linden, which was instituted in 1897, does not give me, as the mayor, the ability to propose a budget, to vote on a budget, or to veto a budget. So if I was a politician, I would be smart enough to sit back and shut up and let city council take a beating because the budget is proposed by three people on a councilmatic committee. But I am not going to shut up. I am going to do what's right for the city of Linden no one wants to add an extra tax to the people of Linden. Not myself, not the council president, nor any of these council persons. But quite frankly, there is no other way to balance our budget and keep it within the 2% mandatory cap proposed by the state. Just so everybody gets a little handle on the hole we are in at this point. The original budget came in $5.2 million above the 2% cap. By law, we could only go 2% above last year's budget. We were $5.2 million above that. Cutting the councilman's salaries and every other salary is not gonna save $5.2 million. The issue is that we needed concessions from the various unions, otherwise they would face severe layoffs. And if you're going to be laying off anywhere between 25 and 31 cops, this city is going to be in serious trouble. What was decided after a lot of hand wringing and hard work was to ask all the departments based on the amount of salaries and operating budgets they generate to hit a certain number, to do away with that $5.2 million so that we don't break the law. Each department was given that number. The fire departments deferred raises and made their number. The police department, which we're just gonna vote on now, after the second round of negotiations made their number. We are instituting mandatory layoffs for city hall workers, which is gonna close down city hall one day a year, a week, uh, I'm sorry, a week. And we are instituting mandatory layoffs for public works. Now, how do you pick up two garbage, two garbage schedules a week when you're only working a four-day week and then throw in other duties that they have? Especially when you get to Labor Day or Fourth of July, it's physically impossible. People drove us crazy because we suspended trash for six months. 
and now we're going to suspend garbage for one day a week so everybody only has one day a week garbage and with all that said and done with all the mandatory cutoffs in the one day a week garbage service we are still and i repeat we are still 1.2 million dollars above the two percent cap 1.2 million above the two percent cap that's why we need reoccurring revenues there's no other way ladies and gentlemen there's no other way we could balance this budget without a reoccurring revenue we've used up our surplus the bank is dry we can't raise taxes more than two percent and yet if we don't get this garbage tax and it is a garbage tax i make no bones about it we are going to be in a serious deficit and this city is not going to be the city that we're used to living in mr roth uh, could now you, i'm sorry america okay with this tax we could bail ourselves out for this year and have our police department whole with only money saved through attrition with this tax we won't have to suspend trash in our public works department and we'll still continue to have two garbage pickups a week again this is not a popular issue and i commend the council persons that are not going to be politicians but they're going to be statesmen because they're going to be doing what's right for the city of linden in the long run we have looked at every option we have looked at every alternative and we have none left other than massive layoffs in the police department and layoffs in the public works and city hall we have no other option that's why it's imperative we pass this tax that's why it's imperative that this governing body stand up and be counted for the benefit of the city of linden and if there's individuals that vote no on this tax then they have a fiduciary responsibility to give us an alternative to make up 1.2 million dollars because that's what we got to make up so if some council person votes no they better man up and say we could make up 1.2 million dollars by doing it a different way otherwise all they're doing is grandstanding so that they could be reelected when they come up for election next year i'll take my chances with re-election and if i don't get voted in again as mayor so be it but i could get up every morning and tell the residents of linden that what i supported was this tax so that we could have a viable city that's not going to go down the toilet if we don't pass this tax. Thank you, Council President. Uh, Mr. Roth, the mayor's been pretty polite at how he's presented the problem. Would you, would you explain to the public uh, how you did in executive session with us uh, what would the ramifications be if this tax doesn't pass? Okay. As Ms. Councilman Brown said earlier, we have a certain amount of dollars coming in. We have a certain amount of dollars going out. Uh, if we do not have this revenue come in with this uh, garbage fee, then we will have to cut somewhere else. It's not going to be made up anywhere else. And the deference to the mayor, we're $1.5 million in the hole. If we do the furloughs, it's $732,000. Furloughs is taking everybody in City Hall 
taking all non-essential personnel, police, fire, dispatch, they're exempt. So everybody else in the city would be furloughed one day a week for the rest of the year. That amounts to $732,000. One day garbage, folks, doesn't save you anything because you'll still have the same amount of garbage. If you're going to have two cans a week and it's picked up once on Tuesday and once on Thursday, it's, if you pick it up on Thursday, you're gonna have two cans. It doesn't, you're not gonna have less garbage. Is anybody here gonna make less garbage if we have one day a week pick up? We pay a tipping fee. We pay that money to the UCUA. Uh, that, it's an obligation that we have to pay. You have to dump el elsewhere. We used to dump in the landfill, didn't cost us a dime. Now it costs us money for the tipping fees. We have no control over the tipping fees. If you go and privatize garbage, that means all of a sudden you're laying off, I think it's 26 employees. That's not going to be enough. You have to close down recreation. Ms. Hero said that you went, well, cl close recreation. We talked about closing recreation. And then we have other citizens complaining. There's always going to be complaints if you cut services. There's no choice. It's either the, the revenue comes up, and yes, Mr. Principato, I don't know where he is, if he's still here. There he is. We'd love to have business come in to the city. Would that be an offset? Sure it would. But today, we used, I believe, five million, a little over $5 million in reserves to balance this budget. We're $1.5 million short as we stand right now. With all the concessions, we're one five short. If we go to the furloughs, now we're eight hundred thousand, a little less than eight hundred thousand dollars short. It's got to come from somewhere. We don't have it. I mean, it, it doesn't exist. So now we have to cut services. So then it goes to, as Mr. Brown said, what services are you going to cut? If you cut services, you're cutting employees. Then that's a complaint. I understand, and I, I, I've been here for a long time now. I've stood up here since uh, Ms. before Mr. Kloji retired. People ask me questions about the contracts. Why aren't they doing this? Why can't they do that? We have collective bargaining agreements that we put into place. And in deference to all our city employees, they gave up two consecutive zeros. In, in, in the public sector, two zeros a lot. One unit gave up three zeros. We negotiate that deal. It was an amazing deal for the city at the time. No one knew that the governor would come in and change the rules. So now I have a collect we have the city has a collective bargaining agreement that we can't change. Are the salaries high? The salaries are commensurate with what's out there, folks. Those contracts, those numbers are solid. I can't go to a union, it's against the law to go to a union and say not only are you going to take a zero, but you have to give us money back. Can't reduce a person's salary. There are constitutional positions that say, I cannot, the city cannot reduce their salary. There are constitutional positions, the positions that say they, they can't even be furloughed. They're not even permitted to be furloughed. Now, I'm, I'm, it's my understanding that everybody here is going to get furloughed if that has to be. So the constitutional officers will take those furloughs. But there are rules that we have to follow that are not in the private sector. In the private sector, you can go to somebody and say, hey, take a pay cut or you're fired. Or I'm not even going to negotiate with you. You know, Mr. Accountant, you're making 75000 now you're making 50000 That can be done, not against the law. If you have a collective bargaining agreement and you go to a union and say, hey, take a K cut or we're gonna, you're going to lose your job, they take a pay cut or they lose a job. Or you pick up and go somewhere else. Hostess, gone. Folks, everyone knows about Hostess, gone. A lot of, lot of uh, businesses here picked up and went to South Carolina, picked up and went to uh, Mexico or China. We can't pick up and go anywhere else. We're here. These are the rules that we have to follow. It's not an option. We have either to cut services 
or not, and in deference to or cut services or raise raise taxes. That's just what it is, Mr. Roth. The ramifications if the budget can't be balanced is what? Uh, well, there's two uh, two problems. One is that the state can come in and fine the council for not putting out a budget, or the state can come in and take over. If the state comes in and takes over, this council loses all control. And as they did in West New York and Hoboken, the state will come in with a person and say, look at the budget and say, well, the 2% doesn't matter. These are our fees. I'm just going to raise the tax. This is what we're doing. Boom, across the board. And you know, you could be looking at in West New York, they've raised taxes over the course of a couple of years, 50, was it 50%, I believe. So you would lose control of your you government? Well, not me. Uh, the council, you, the council would lose control, which means the citizens would have no voice no in what's going on you, you don't like you don't like what the controller does from the state to come in and you vote these people out controllers still here you don't like what they do controller doesn't care he's not elected or she's not elected and they can just come in and do what they want council Thank president you. mr brown yeah and alan i think hit the nail on the head as far as the prospect of us someone from the state coming in and telling us or controlling what we do. Alexis, I want you to explain our cash flow problem that we're having. We need, we need a, a budget to be adopted in order for us to get a certified tax rate from the county. Without a budget in place, it makes us harder for us to meet our cash flow obligations by not having tax revenue coming in. Our obligations will be running short of cash by August if a budget's not put in place. We've tentatively introduced a budget. We have certain amendments that we were going to make in July and have a hearing on the budget and have a budget in place by August. However, if this does not pass, we will not have funds in place to adopt the budget in August. Therefore, our cash flow will suffer. I just want to make that clear for the public to understand. We are running out of cash. A couple of months ago, I made reference to $14 million that we had to pass for tax, tax anticipated notes. That money's being used up. We're talking about as soon as July and August where the city of Linden will run out of money if we don't act on this. Um, and, and, and just to hit the nail on the head, we have our financial planner here. If, if you, Dan, if you can speak about our current situation and our even outlook that Moody's and S&P is looking at. Uh, sure. The, the, um, would you introduce yourself sure. for the cameras, the people at home? Dan Marinello, NW Financial Group, financial advisor to the city. I work primarily with the city with regards to, I'm sorry, with regards to any debt issuances, bond issu issuances, note issuances, the credit rating of the city, dealing with investors who are out there looking to purchase notes or bonds that the city issues, all things that are required in order for you to do, and the city to do all the capital improvements or any other projects that are necessary. One of the biggest things that everyone is looking at right now is a financial projections for this current year and for the next five years. And recurring revenues are the answer to, to the problems of shortfalls in the current year, but they're also the answer to the out years. And if you don't provide recurring revenues to fill these gaps, then your credit rating drops. It costs extremely much more to go out and issue debt. It'll cost you more in interest payments. And in fact, a lot of towns in New Jersey, some that Mr. Roth just mentioned, could not issue any debt because no one wanted to purchase their notes. And that is the ramifications of not having a budget projection that shows stable recurring revenues to balance the budget. Mr. Ross, one other thing, uh, Council President. If we do not do something this year, when, if and when we pass a budget, you're going to be in the hole. A furlough is a one-time revenue boost, um, unless you're doing it every year, and then it's no longer furlough, then it's a new work schedule. That's not, so you're going to be in the hole next year right off the bat. As soon as you pass the budget, you're already in the hole. Because not only, as I said, do we use our reserves for $5 million, but we're also doing a furlough 
which is 700,000, so 732,000. So you're $5.7 million in the hole as of the day you pass this budget for this year, for next year. As Mr. Marinello says, if we don't have a reoccurring revenue, you're just spiraling out of control. Mr. Northgray, hmm? uh, you've been involved with uh, development in town. How would that impact industry coming into town if we can't pass the budget? I, I would be speculating. It's 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 difficult to say. You know what 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 new businesses may look like. You know what what they may look at in terms of coming to town. Uh, you know they don't any any developer is going to be looking for a stable environment. They're not looking for anything volatile. But it's 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 really difficult for me to speculate as, as to what impact that might have on it, Mr. Council President. Would it be a positive or a negative situation? I would, if, if it were either, I, w I would say it's, it's neutral to negative, or negative to neutral, neutral at best, I would say. Thank you. Anybody else in the audience, please, Malik? Council President, there's one other item I just wanted Mrs. to bring. Zach, go ahead. It, this is a fact. We've gotten this information from our tax assessor. It's a fact the city of Linden, since 2008, has lost $125,334,000 $460 in rateables, which equates to, in tax dollars, $7,149,100. That's a fact of what we've lost in our rateable base, which affects our budget. Without even doing anything since 2008, that's how much tax dollars we've lost. I just want to share that and make sure everybody understands the ramifications in the rateable loss. This is Malik. Three minutes, please. In this discussion that we're having, it was mentioned, I think, by the mayor about layoffs with the, the police department. But correct me if I'm wrong, someone had mentioned to me that there were 30 policemen that wanted to be laid off, and supposedly their names were known, so they're volunteering. Can maybe Mr. Roth just clarify something, this for me? Uh, Ms. Malik, nobody volunteered to be laid off. There was a vote. The union knew, initially knew what the vote was, what it meant. Um, it did not pass. The second uh, time we went back and continued to negotiate with the police department, they did pass it. But in terms of names, I have names of the 37 officers that we're looking, that we would be required to lay off. I have those names. I have the names of the 14 supervisors that would be demoted, 13 supervisors that would wind up being demoted with the layoff plan. But I don't believe, as I, you know, honestly, that anybody was looking to say, vol well, voluntarily, as you put it, be laid off. No, I don't know anybody who would have said that. All right, thank you. Excuse me, excuse me, hold it. You go through the chair. You have to go through the chair. You have to, you have to, you can't shout from the floor. And you spoke already, so please. I was at the budget meeting last night, and when I questioned about the officers wanting to be laid off, and I said, really, officers want to be laid off? You said you had the names of the officers and that they wanted to be laid off. Council President, I could So am I that. hearing things and going crazy? You misunderstood the, ex what the re retort was to your question. What happened the first time was that the, we, told, we dealt with the police union. We had some concessions that we felt were doable, both the union and the city of Linden. It was brought to a vote to the PBA and superior, the PBA. We told the union that we had about 20 officers that were going to get laid off if they didn't accept these concessions. So again, remember, 20 officers are going to get laid off. The vote was 81 to 4 not to accept the concessions. So in other words, 16 people didn't even vote for self-preservation. That was what the, the answer to your question was, and you misunderstood it. 
Okay, Mayor, with all due respect, when I said last night and you guys corrected me and said they wanted to be left laid off, and I said, okay, then let them be laid off. That I remember the hand gesture and everything. You misunderstood so, it. That's all I could tell you. I Thank misunderstood. You. Okay. Yes, Mr. President, if I may. Ms. Thompson. I, you know, basically what, what the mayor is trying to tell you is that we have a gun against our head. We, we, we tried uh, very hard uh, to avoid layoffs. And in, in doing so, we offered a plan to the police department um, for them to give us certain concessions. And that would allow us the ability not to lay off the, the police officers in this town. They took it to a vote. When they took it to a vote, they voted not to go with the concessions and to go with the layoffs. So that's basically what we're saying is that they voted against the concessions and agreed to go with the layoff instead. We sat down again and had further discussion and the second time around we were able to convince them to go with the concessions. So now we're in a position where we don't uh, we're, we're looking at not laying off police officers because no one wants to lay police, police officers or firemen off in this town. We'd like to keep our level of protection that we have. So I think maybe, you know, sometimes we get a little emotional when we come to these meetings, uh, but I, the, the, and, I, and I'm sure the mayor doesn't mean to offend you, but I do think that maybe you misinterpreted what was being spoke at, at the meeting. Thank you, Councilman. Uh, anyone else? Yeah. You spoke already. Anyone that hasn't spoke? Have you spoken on this already? No. You did. You could come to the mic, and then we're going to cut it off, and uh, we're going to vote. I just have a question about the landfill. When can you tell me when the landfill was closed? What year? 2000. 2000. And how much in surplus did we have in 2000? 45 million. We had a considerable 45 million? surplus. We had a considerable surplus. Okay. So what happened from then till now? That's, that's the boy. Well, then when did, this sur when did we le lose that surplus? Because... It, number one, if you remember in 2006 and 2005, even though in 2005 we had a $6 million deficit, in 2006 we had a $7 million deficit, we used that money for, sur uh, we used the money from surplus to balance the budget. So right away, right away those two years, we went into a quick fix to balance the budget and we had to make up that money in 2008, 9, and 10 and again the deficit was being used and that's where, I mean our surplus was being used and that's where the, uh, the reserves were depleted. So we used the, the reserves to cut the deficit, correct? Mr. Sharpie, take your seat please. Sit down. Yes. Yes. We, we've lived on a credit card. Okay. In retrospect, do you think that was a good idea? No. Let me. Okay. Let me so this this is what I'm saying. We need to do something differently. I don't know what it is, but we need to do something differently. And we're trying to do that now. And I don't think this is the answer, quite honestly. And I don't think anybody else here thinks Counts it is either. Let me, hold on, Mr. Principato. Everybody thinks a closed landfill that we. Close the gates, put a lock years. on it, and that's it. This landfill costs us over a million dollars a year just to maintain and, and, and do the, it's the environmental work down that landfill that, that, that costs us money. We have to hire engineers. Uh, to, there's wells that have to be checked. On a good year, it costs us a million dollars. In years past, it it's probably cost us two, three million dollars a year for this closed landfill. Everybody's getting the idea of, you know, the landfill's closed. That landfill is a, still a living, breathing, like Mr. Frazier has said, said for 10 years, it's a living, breathing, you know, landfill. It rots, it moves, it shifts. 
and we have guys there every day maintaining it. So, you know, I thought the same thing. Hey, you're here, the landfill's closed, let's lock the gate and let's get out of here. Well, it, it's not. We, we spend a lot of money every year on that landfill. It don't make sense to a lot of people, but most people that own landfills, when they close them, they close the gate and skip the country. But us as the city of Linden, I feel the state's using us as a guinea pig. You know, to, to, we get fined all the time. That's how we got the hawk rise, was uh, through the fines that we incurred through this landfill. This landfill is going to be in our back pockets, I'd say, for at least another 10 years. It's going to cost us money. Uh, it, I don't think the landfill may, may ever be permanently closed and not cost us any money. It's very difficult to absorb, you know, that we're spending all this money on a closed landfill, but that's that's what's going on down there. Thank I, you, Councilman. I Shane. understand that. <clears throat> but uh, the seven million dollars that we lost in rateables, that's what we need to make up. We Thank need you. to make up the, that seven million dollars in rateables. If we do that, then we won't have a problem. Please. Ten dollars per household, thirty dollars per commercial. I just don't think that's that's. That's going to stay at that price number one, and I don't think that that's the answer. Thank, Thank you. you. Last, the woman in the back hasn't spoke, and then we're going Council to vote. Council President. Mr. Brown, go ahead before she comes to the mic. I'll wait. I'll wait. Okay. Three minutes, please. Hi. June Lazaro, 1301 Kent Place. Um, I, like many here, I don't want to see this occur, you know. Um, property taxes are high if we have to do it then then so be it I wish that all of us were more involved and maybe we could come up with proper solutions to avoid this I do believe that all council members here uh, don't want this really to occur okay you all live in our town and I you know the one side of me says I, I don't want it to occur right but we don't have the rateables right now and we have to do what we have to do. Um, I, I wish there were other options. My concerns with this is, in fact, that when I attended one of the meetings, we were talking about a cap, that we could only do this, this will only be instituted for a couple years. Now my concern is, after hearing the ordinance being announced, that there is no cap, that we cannot specify it. So one of the problems with this being a quote unquote temporary solution, okay, and the only reason it's a temporary solution is because we don't have the revenue coming in, right? It's not that we want to tax for the garbage. The garbage is not the issue. We just don't have the money coming in. So it's a temporary solution that ultimately is going to, I can almost foresee additional challenges down the road. Because number one, we're not having it as a time table on this because how can we no one can predict the future right don't we all wish that we had more rateables coming in I do believe the future of Linden is dynamic and I do believe that as a result of the LEDC along with a lot of the supporting businesses under Ron Stefanowitz that a lot of effort has been made in the right direction Part of my concern with the budget is by decreasing that amount for the 30000 for the LEDC budget, we're not going to see the, a lot of investments coming into the city. Retention and getting new businesses into the city is such key to our continued success as a community. The projects that the LEDC has been involved in is the Transit Village, right? the Connection Road, right? Okay, um, they've gotten the, the GM property going on. Yes, reality is nothing's happened. But yeah. I think we have to also look at that aspect because we have to move forward and work on getting the rateables back into the city of Linden. As a community, we have achieved so much together. Okay, and as a community, we will move forward together. So if this has to be a temporary solution, then we need to work on in a positive manner and get more of us involved. Thank you. They've tried what they could. Thank you for all you do. Thank you. Motion, please.
Uh, Mr. President, I move um, the hearing be closed and the ordinance adopted for ordinance 5725 and request a second. 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 Mr. Clerk. Mr. Colvis. I am in favor of this. I know we're going through hard times right now and this is a very hard vote, but in order to vote yes on this, I think that it'll solve our lesson of blow what comes down to the future if we do not pass this, so I vote yes. Koziel? Yes. Brown? Yes. Armstead? Mr. President, prior to my vote, I just want to just discuss a few things with the audience here. Um, we've, we've basically heard from a lot of people this evening. Uh, I think that we um, basically realized that one of the problems that we had, that we closed the landfill. Uh, at one point in our, in our, in our, in our um, one point the city was able to um, take the garbage and the debris to a landfill free of charge, okay? But we, we no longer in, enjoy that luxury. And um, so now we're looking at a surcharge per household, a tax, however you want to define it. Uh, but I think, you know, this governing body, I, I think that typically when you have a tax, uh, politicians particularly will have a tax and then the next year you turn around and raise the tax and uh, it never seems to go the other way. Yeah, I mean, that's just what I know. I mean, that's just the way it is. So I'm thinking that maybe we've got to think outside the box here, okay? We know we have a charge here, and that charge is going to affect every household in this town. Now, what would stop us from taking a portion of that money and actually dedicating it to maybe refining the way that we handle our garbage? Okay, just at a glance, I mean, they, they say up to 25% of our solid waste that we dispose of is um, uh, organic, organic in nature, which means it could be used for composting, okay? We're paying upwards of uh, $1.3 million a year in tipping fees. That's what we have to attack. That $1.3 million, we should be going after it with a vengeance. Okay, it's going to take us to rethink the way we do business in this town. Okay, the first thing you need to do, if you're going to uh, assess homeowners $10 a house, you need to establish some sort of um, a recycling authority in town. And it's got to operate pretty much the same way any other authority, like the Lyndon Roselle Sewage Authority would operate. You know, but you'd have to have it in a way that it couldn't be politicized. You'd have to have more or less maybe a few members from council and you have to put some term limitations on it you'd have to have some people members from the public that govern this particular authority okay and at that point we have to like I said start addressing how do we reduce these tipping fees how can we make our garbage make money for us okay if any trash night I don't know if you ride through town you look at trash as as, as a whole I see all I see resin chairs I see wood Everything in our trash, as we say, there's gold in the hills. One, one man's gold, tr trash is another man's treasure. Um, the, um, the plastic that is thrown away can be recycled and sent somewhere. Um, the, uh, the wood that goes in a, something as simple as a, a wooden table can be ground up and used as, as, as compost or, 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 or chips. For, there's so many different things you can do with the garbage. Our objective in this town should be to reduce that tipping fee. And not only that, in order to be able to accomplish something like that, the money that I'm talking about dedicating a certain portion should be used to upgrade our recycling facilities. We should be doing single stream recycling because what happens now, just at a glance, if you look at the money that we receive for our recycling, we're getting pennies on the dollar. That's because we're, we're taking everything and we're letting somebody else uh, take our, uh, our recyclables away at a, at, a, at a minimal cost. Now, aluminum is paying somewhere like 70 cents a pound. Now, the way we handle our, our, our recyclables, we're getting, we're getting like 11 cents a pound for it. So if we had some sort of single stream recycling method in place, you could separate your aluminum, you could separate your tin, you could separate your plastic, and you could probably get a premium on your dollar. Now, at some point, if you took your recycling efforts to another level where you could start and you, and you built a facility 
and you allowed it, you, you, you bonded it, and allowed the money that you were, that you were receiving uh, from your recyclables to pay for it, and maybe even take a portion of this $10 towards paying this bond off, at some point, you could actually make Linden into a location where other towns would want to bring their trash and want to bring their recyclables. And it's not just um, uh, the stuff that you throw out in the garbage. You could tell, you could, people could bring stone. You can grind stone up and you can sell it to builders. I mean, you, you, you can get money for, for, they pay you to bring it in and you, and you actually receive money as, as, as it went out. So it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a business. And um, if it wasn't a business, everybody wouldn't be trying to talk about going green. I mean, there's money. There's, there's, there's a lot of money in trash. And I think this council, this governing body, I mean, we talked about this, raising this, money, well, raising this tax uh, for, for homeowners, and we talked about it. And I, I'm, I'm sad to say that we just did, didn't come up with any, any type of other ways to, um, to solve this problem. We just couldn't do it. I mean, and it's right here in front of us. We have to be a little more creative. We have to think outside of the box. Come on, this is Linden. This is Linden. This is a great city. So I just say that there's a few things we have to do. And the, the, the main thing we have to do is reevaluate the way that we handle our recycling, the way we, we, we handle our, our trash, OK? And um, Linden can be a town that everybody comes to to bring the trash. And we have the space. There's no, no question about a location. We have plenty of land in this town. There should be no reason why we couldn't put a state-of-the-art facility. But the first thing we have to do is commit that if we're going to take money from homeowners uh, to, to, to charge them for the, for the trash or the garbage pickup, a portion of it has to go into trying to redouble our efforts in recycling so that one day we reach a point where we say, hey, you know that $10? Here, we can give it back to you or we can use it for something else. And it also allows us, if we establish some sort of authority, it allows, it allows us to re-evaluate um, the whole Department of Public Works structure, okay? And right now, we're under um, civil service, but if you were created an authority, and you start moving those, those workers from out of DPW into a, a different authority, you're playing by a whole different set of rules. Maybe you don't have to call down a Trenton every time you want to make a, a decision. You, you know, you, 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 you'll be operating under a whole different set of rules. So again, my point is this. We've got to think differently in Linden. We're, we're going to be assessing homeowners um, $10 a month and businesses somewhere around, six, I think, $60 a month. Uh, let's not just take this money and apply it to a budget. Let's take a portion of it and utilize it to perhaps have one of the best state-of-the-art facilities in this area that we can actually use it to generate cash as, far, as opposed to just taxing and assessing the, the, uh, our constituents. And your vote uh, is? My vote is yes, Mr. President. Mrs. Crosby Harling? No. Sadowski? Okay, I'm going to vote yes. Originally, I was against this. I taught in Cranford for 35 years, lived in Linden, and the biggest thing I used to tell them, they were charged for garbage. And I thought that was the biggest joke, because Linden, we had it for free. Uh, with the budget crunch as it is now, I don't want the city to be taken over like Hoboken was. I, I, I really don't, because then we would have no say, you would have no say, and I think it would be worse. Um, Derek had mentioned ways, I guess, to make more money. I certainly hope we can do that, and then maybe in a year or two, we won't have this. And like the mayor said, it is a tax. And I'm, I, I'm, was, I'm really torn that I, would, I have to vote yes, in my own conscience. I talked to some people in the sixth ward. Some of them said yes, probably a little bit more than not said no. But I don't want to be like Hoboken. I don't want someone to come in from whatever it is, the state, and say, you have to do this, you have to do that. And I'm hoping within the next two years or whatever it is, we don't have to do this. We can just stop it and go back like we were. So I vote yes. Sheehy. 
I vote yes, but I'd like to qualify my vote a bit. For the five years that I've been sitting here, we have cut spending up here. It, 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 we, we don't feel it because your taxes, your taxes will never get cut. But we have cut spending. We have cut these departments. There, there's no more to cut. And now, you know, it, there's no way out of this. So what I'm looking at, is it cheaper to pay the $10 or lose 30 policemen? There's no way we can go without these policemen and, and to cut services. Since I've been here, we've cut over 100 employees. Public Works at one time, it was said tonight, had 140 employees. Now they're down to 88, you know, 80 something. Uh, but, you know, we've cut and we've cut. And I'm proud uh, of the job I've did cutting, but there's nothing left to cut. It, it seems easy. People get up here. Please, nobody came up here with an idea. Rateables, yeah, we need rateables. You're damn right we need rateables. You know, we do. But give us an idea. You know, it's just like the people here tonight are voting no. Come up with an idea. I do not want. I can't pay my taxes, and you want me to add on another $10. I can't even pay my employees, and, 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 and I'm gonna add $10? There's just no other way out of this. This council has spent so much time in the last months. The poor Treasury Department, the lady's probably gonna leave the country because of what we've been going through. You know, there's nobody wants this fee, nobody, but there, there, there's just no way out of it. And I just feel I'd rather have 20, 30 policemen uh, 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 in our town than, than to not charge the $10. So I'm voting yes. Yemakaitis? No. Medina? No. Kaczynski? Uh, when looking at this, I'm going to vote no out of principle for the other uh, cap, respect for the cap, and I think this is a way to circumvent the cap. Mr. Moore. I'm going to qualify my vote. I've been in this town for 61 years. I've been involved in government for 40 years on and off, and we're in a very crucial situation which the, you can't comprehend. There's, we're backs against the wall. I don't want to raise taxes. I said I would never raise taxes, but I'm not going to let the state come in here and dictate and, and, and do things that we have no control of. So I'm going to vote yes. The resolution is approved. We're going to move into the consent agenda. All items listed at asterisk are considered to be routine by the City Council and be enacted with one motion. There will be no separate discussion on these items unless the Council member and the citizens so request. In the event that item is removed from the general order of business and considered in its normal sequence on the agenda. Items 1 through 9. Does anyone wish to remove an item from the agenda? On my right. In the center. On my left. Seeing no hands, I ask for a motion. I move for approval of uh, consent items one through nine and request a second. Second. Mr. Kalbus. Mr. Kalbus? Yes. Koziel? Yes. Brown? Yes. Armstead? Yes. Cosby Harling? Yes. Sadowski? Yes. Sheehy? Yes. Yamakaitis? Yes. Medina? Yes. Kaczynski? Yes. Mr. Moore? Yes. It's getting pretty late, and for sake of uh, everybody's uh, benefit, I've asked the mayor to uh, forego his report, and he's uh, agreed to. And uh, I'd like to ask the committee uh, council members to uh, keep your reports extremely short if possible except for personnel and finance so mrs yamakaitis would you give a report please yes mr Pre yes mr president from the personnel committee approval is requested for the following personnel actions 
Number one, in the police department, the acceptance of Patrick Cassidy's resignation as a parking enforcement officer effective April 5th, 2013. Number two, in the police department, the approval of an unpaid F family medical leave of absence for public safety telecommunicator Rhonda Fullerton from June 13, 2013 through August 1st, 2013. Number three, in the city clerk's office, the unpaid internship of Brian Fritchie, effective July 8, 2013 to August 9th, 2013. Number four, in the public works division, the approval of an unpaid FMLA leave of absence for Ronald Valderos from June 21st, 2013 through July 31st, 2013. Number five, in the public works division, the approval of a paid FMLA leave of absence for Albert Bianco from May 31st, 2013 through June 30th, 2013. In number six, in the municipal court, the approval of a paid FMLA leave of absence for Ivana Brodraki from May 29th, 2013 through July 8th, 2013. Number seven, the approval of the seasonal list for the Division of Recreation for the summer programs. The list is on file in the treasurer's office. Number eight, in the finance department, Division of Treasury, the paid FMLA leave of absence for Malika Banyak from June 13, 2013 through July 19, 2013. Number nine, in the fire department, the approval of an unpaid FMLA leave of absence for firefighter Steve Kalesa from June 12, 2013 through July 31, 2013. Number 10, the ratification of a one-year collective <coughs> negotiation agreement between the City of Linden and PBA Local 42 for the period of January 1, 2014 through December 31, 2014 per attached memorandum of understanding subject to ratification and execution by PBA Local 42. Number 11, the ratification of a one-year collective negotiations agreement between the City of Linden and the Linden Superior Officer Association for the period of January 1, 2014 through December 31, 2014 per attached memorandum of understanding subject to ratification and execution by the LSOA. Number 12, in the Department of Public Property and Community Services Department, the change in compensation method and civil service status for Brad Crianzo, recreation leader, effective June 19, 2013, to work no more than 35 hours per week. Salary is commensurate with the City of Linden salary ordinance for this position. Funds, for the, funds to be paid from the specific trust account for public information access funds. Number 13, in the municipal court, the change in title for Jacqueline Williams and Vivian Jebro to temporary clerks pursuant to NJSA 11A colon 4-13C effective retroactively to June 1st, 2013, pending the posting and interview process for said temporary positions. Compensation for said employees will be paid from the specific trust account for municipal court PAAD account. Number 14, the city accepts the retirements of the following city employees and thanks them for their service to the residents of the city and wishes them good luck in their future endeavors. Edward Adams, Christopher Aslin, Marianne Aslin, John Johnston, Michael Modrak, Frank Pastanak, Benjamin Skalniak, Donald Stuck, Richard Sudnick, Thomas Angu Angulera, Rhonda Fullerton, Dennis Keefe, Mark Evan, Michael Blazowski, Michael Sabilski, Elizabeth Gavigan, Dennis Kobe, Diane Molin, Juan Stratus, Burton Zinemer, James Kleinvell, David Daler, Eugene Braun, William Caldwell, Joseph Dooley, Gary Hickman, Richard Yusko, James Kushner, Frank Loperino, Matthew Marcino, Theodore Miller, Joseph Rizzo, Louis Scaldino, Joyce Sheehy, John Traub, Matthew Van Zewater, Jeffrey Vitrano, Charles Wisnowski, Michael Reha, James Schulhafer, George Wazilski, Wayne Hans, Brian Krakowski, John Sabilski, Kathleen Colgan, 
Anthony Perozelli, Stanley Yashai. Yasha. I move for approval and ask for a second. Second. Mr. Colbus. Yes. Cozio. Yes. Brown. Yes. Armstead. Yes. Cosby Hurling. I'm going to vote no on number 12 and yes to everything else. Sadowski. Yes. Sheehy. Yes. Yamakaitis. Yes. Medina. Yes. Kaczynski. Yes. Mr. Moore. Yes. Uh, Mr. Brown, would you, uh, Chairman Brown, give us the uh, financial report? Yes, thank you. Approval is requested for the following finance actions. The payment of bills totaling $2,030,427.29. The bills have been signed by the mayor, council president, and finance chairman, and a detailed check register and vouchers are on file in the clerk's office. I move for approval and ask for a second. Second. Mr. Colbus. Cozio? Yes. Brown? Yes. Armstead? Yes. Cosby Hurling? Yes. Sadowski? Yes. Sheehy? Yes. Yamakaitis? Yes. Medina? Yes. Kaczynski? Yes. Mr. Moore? Yes. Okay. We're going to move into resolutions uh, 2013 to 23. That was continued from May 21st, 2013. Public wishing to be heard. Please uh, raise your hand. And come up and speak. Am I right? In the center? On my left? Yes, for a motion then. I move for a motion to accept. Wait, wait, wait. We've got a comment from the floor. Which number? 2013 243. By the. No, 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 no. no. no uh, I'm going oh, to okay. process. It's 2013 223. It's continued from May 21st, 2013. Seeing none, I ask for a motion. I move to accept resolution 2013-223 and ask for a second. Second. Mr. Colvis. Yes. Cozio. Yes. Brown. Yes. Armstead. Yes. Cosby Harling. Yes. Sadowski. Yes. Sheehy. Yes. Yamakaitis. Yes. Medina. Yes. Kaczynski. Yes. Mr. Moore. Yes. I'd like to move into resolutions 2013 to 226 through 2013 to 262. Public comment will be permitted on specific resolutions to be removed from the consent approval. Please read the synopsis of the resolutions which have been prepared by the city clerk's office. Each is informative and self-explanatory. However, if you wish to address a specific resolution, the council will entertain questions on it. Does anyone on my right wish to remove any resolutions from 226 to 262? Number, please. 245. 257. 258 in the center numbers 234 237 240 241 258. 262. In the center. On my left. 243. Motion on the remainder. Yeah, I think I got them all. I'd like to make a motion to accept these resolutions. From 226 to 262, except 234, 237, 240, 241, 243, 245, 
256, 257, 256, 257, 258, 262, and ask for a second. Second. Mr. Col Colibus. Yes. Koziel. Yes. Brown. Yes. Armstead. Yes. Cosby Harling. Yes. Sadowski. Yes. Sheehy. Yes. Yamakaitis. Yes. Medina. Yes. Kaczynski. Yes. Mr. Moore. Yes. Ms. Malik, uh, 234. Just real quick on this one here. This pertains to the 5728. It's the same automobiles that you were talking about. Even though the, the Chief, dollar value is different. Chief Schuylhaver. That that's all one and the same. Okay, fine. That's motion, please. Council President, I move on resolution two thirty four and ask for a second. Second. Mr. Colbus? Yes. Cozio? Yes. Brown? Yes. Armstead? Yes. Cosby Harling? Yes. Sadowski? Yes. Sheehy? Yes. Yamakaitis? Yes. Medina? Yes. Kaczynski? Yes. Mr. Moore? Yes. This is Malik like, uh, 237, landfill. I'm just going to lump all my comments together from even the other resolutions that will pertain to the landfill. If you total all the capital items for this, it's about $612,000. I know some time ago um, when our previous councilman for the Ninth Ward was talking about Bob Frazier, he was talking about, or he approached me um, about some ways for capturing the landfill gas and whatnot. Right now, this is a sinkhole for money, and I know uh, councilman from the sixth, seventh ward was talking about this, uh, Mr. Sheehy. Has anyone moved on trying to do something with the landfill gas? Uh, Council President, let me respond. Actually, we just had a, a very positive meeting uh, a week ago, and uh, we actually just submitted our application to PCNG to s install a solar panel that could potentially generate close to $300,000 a year for the city of Linden. How much did you say? How close to $300,000. Okay. It's two seventy. Again, this is just an application. Will we actually get that? actual kilowatt price, we don't know. But the good news is we should know come September, October of this year. Uh, they will, PSCNG will announce the projects that they selected. Right now, uh, again, we submitted our application. Looks good. We have the landfill, nothing on it. It could generate 300, up to $300,000 and it could help cover our operation cost. But then it's gonna be an outlay of capital for those solar panels. The way the deal works, they install everything. Again, they pay us per kilowatt. We're going to utilize that money to offset the budget, and probably Ms. Zach could, could, could speak a little bit more about it. Because the landfill cost us, I'm going to be wrong on these numbers, a little bit over $600,000 to operate. Mm -hmm. It is closed, but we have to maintain it. Mm -hmm. So we're looking for other avenues to kind of offset those numbers. But to answer the other question on gas, unfortunately, there's little gas, and there's no vendors that are interested in obtaining that methane gas. We looked into that as well. So, yeah, I know it was a hefty, a large study that was done, and so there's, that's, there's no option? There, we, we looked at several vendors. Um, none of them show interest. None of them show interest. Okay. All my other landfill questions have been rolled up. That's fine. I'm done. Okay. Motion on 237. Council President, if it's okay with Mrs. Malik, can I lump in? 237, 240, 241, and 246, Ms. Malley? Yes. Okay. I would like to move on resolution 237, 240, 241, and 246 and ask for a second. Second. Mr. Colbus? Yes. Cozio? Brown? Yes. Armstead? Yes. Crosby Harling? Yes. Sadowski? Yes. Sheehy? Yes. Yamakaitis? Yes. Medina? Yes. Kaczynski? Yes. Mr. Moore? Yes, Mr. Cozio has been excused for a moment. Uh, Mr. Roman, 243. What? Yeah. Just a moment. 
my question is, um, by accepting this uh, FAA grant, what are the conditions? Is there any, because from what I understand, is it the lease up on, or the, the lease on the airport up? We don't have to have the airport in 2014? Mr. Virchik. I mean, wasn't that a condition of moving that property back years ago? Uh, I believe we signed a 20-year lease agreement with FAA. And that's up when? another 10 years or so another 10 years and does this create any more things because you're accepting this grant no okay thank you motion please on 243 council president I move on resolution 243 and ask for a second second mr. Colbus Cozio Brown yes Armstead yes Cosby Harling yes Sadowski? Yes. Sheehy? Yes. Yamakaitis? Yes. Medina? Yes. Kaczynski? Yes. Mr. Moore? Yes. Okay. Pat Hero, 245. Okay, this is with regard to Meridia Lifestyles Urban Renewal Linden as the redeveloper and authorizing execution of the redevelopment agreement. Um, how much of a tax, uh, um, I guess, it, God, it's so late, I can't even think, um, a tax abatement are they getting? Can we say that now? Or are they getting a tax abatement? Can anybody say that? Or? Uh, Mr. Northgrave, could you uh, enlighten us on that? This resolution only appoints them, designates them as the redeveloper, and this is not the, uh, the long-term tax exemption, uh, the, the long-term tax exemption is on for introduction this evening. Uh, that would be adopted, if, if approved by the council, would be adopted by ordinance. The introduction of that ordinance would be this evening. Okay, is it possible, to, I guess maybe tomorrow I can get a copy of this resolution? Afterwards, have they been sure. fully vetted, the organization that's? Yes. Okay, so there won't be any problems like there was with Verge? We remember Verge. We uh, part of, of what uh, the city did uh, was to engage the services of NW Financial, who uh, did a, a, a various analysis of this company. Uh, one of them included uh, reviewing their uh, balance sheet and their ability to perform on the project. And while there are never any guarantees in life, Meridia has successfully developed a number of projects in Rahway, West New York, and other communities, and uh, they are a very stable company that should not have any problem building this project. And of course, I might have to add, since I did, for time's sake, skip the fact that the government doesn't belong in the redevelopment business, have to add that if they choose to go into phase two, that they purchase the property, not the city of Linden purchase the property for them, but that they themselves by the individual properties in phase two. I want you to remember that because that's one reason why we're having fiscal problems. Motion, please. Council President, I'd like to move on resolution 2013-245 and ask for a second. Second. Mr. Colobus. Yes. Cozio. Yes. Brown. Yes. Armstead. Yes. Cosby Harling. Yes. Sadowski? Yes. Sheehy? Yes. Yamakaitis? Yes. Medina? Yes. Kaczynski? Yes. Mr. Moore? Yes. Mrs. Malik on 256. Uh, we we approved okay. that one. Thank that you. one's good. Uh, Ciro, 257. Okay, normally self explanatory, except this is so convoluted I couldn't even understand it. It says resolution authorizing contracts with certain state approved contract vendors for contracting units pursuant to NJSA 48-1112A, Firefighter 1A81374, T-0106. Is this is like some kind of a labor union thing? What is it? I just don't understand it at all. Chief, who is it? This is a vendor and we're just uh, qualifying that vendor. That's all it is. Okay, a vendor for what kind of items? For, for parts for for self-contained breathing apparatus. Oh, okay, thank you. 
Motion on uh, 257, please. Council President, I move on resolution 257 and ask for a second. Second. Mr. Calvis. Cozio? Yes. Brown? Yes. Armstead? Yes. Cosby Harling? Yes. Sadowski? Yes. Sheehy? Yes. Yamakaitis? Yes. Medina? Yes. Mr. Kaczynski? Yes. Mr. Moore? Yes. Uh, Mr. Sheehy, uh, Mrs. Malik's uh, 256 wasn't in the uh, agreement that she oh. made. So, oh. would you like, to, Mrs. Malik, would you like to speak on 256? I apologize, Mrs. Malik. This oh, is it's West 246. I'm sorry. But we still have to move it. The only question that I have is isn't this a rather large overrun of $200,000? And how could we have. Um, not anticipated that or I'm just questioning that high amount compared to the total con original contract of 527,000 Mr. Virchick during the project they discovered PCBs in the sanitary sewers so we had to hire somebody to clean the lines out uh, re uh, get rid of all that stuff that cost almost a hundred thousand dollars, and the engineer did it. On, and he had a couple sub consultants. Another large part of that we had utility delays with Verizon, Public Service, and the gas company. So the contractor was working slowly during a couple of months, but we had to keep the on-site inspector on a job. So the job was delayed because of the utilities. We, we tried to move most of the utilities before the job, but Verizon did not uh, move their conduits slow enough. Uh, public service took forever to move a few uh, utility poles, and the gas company, they discovered some uh, gas lines that they weren't aware of. So, so you don't think someone's rather remiss of not doing the analysis for the PCBs and then just the project not having this coordinated beforehand? Well, yeah, some of those things uh, we thought were taken care of, like Verizon, but they had a... We're sorry, they, they, your call did not go through. Will you try your call again? But what about the testing of the, the PCBs? I mean, that's well, what we, an oversight. We don't test for PCBs. They were found. It was discovered during the project by somebody working for, The, Go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead, the, yeah, the Linden Roselle Sewage Authority had a consultant working on the PCBs in the Arthur Kill, and occasionally he opened up a manhole and he did some testing and he found that there were some pretty bad PCBs on West Elizabeth yeah, Avenue. I just got the message from. Okay. Thank you. Motion on two uh, fifty-six. Council President, I move on resolution 256 and ask for a second. Second. Mr. Calvis. <coughs> uh, he's gone. Uh, Mr. Cozio. Yes. Brown. Yes. Armstead. Yes. Cosby Harling. Yes. Sadowski. Yes. Sheehy. Yes. Yamakaitis. Yes. Medina. Yes. Kaczynski. Yes. Mr. Moore. Yes. Uh, 258, Mrs. Malik. Is there any conflict between this and um, the ordinance 5728? Because 5728 just refers to the police department, and this says it's for the Dell marketing, the same CAD, possibly the same CAD system, but it's the police and fire department. Chief Schulhaver. Uh, that, that's the same CAD uh, system that we spoke about earlier, uh, the Cody system. Is replacing QED. But then why is it stated in 5728 that it's only for the police department? If I'm not mistaken. Yeah, it's, it's for all public safety, police, fire, uh, central dispatch. Council President. Mr. Brown. Can we have Mike explain it a little? Who? 
Sure. The CAD system. The CAD system. W would you come to the mic, please? It's in reference to uh, the CAD system. What it is. Why is there a resolution and ordinance? What it, what is, the ordinance is, is a. Well, how I said it is, this refers to the fire and police department, but 5728 just refers to that the police department needs it. And we talk No, it's actually both. It's the CAD system. It's dispatching, fire inspections, uh, Fine. police reporting. It's done. Okay. That's okay. Fine. Pat Hero on 258. I'm to stay here because I do have that question. Here it says it's 550,000. Is the 400, um, let me see, where is it? The $421,901 for the licenses in addition, or is that inclusive? No, 550,000 is a total capital budget. The 421,000 we, we, we purchased high because we didn't have the final quote. So the total came to 421,000. So token, so that means that's going to be instead 550,000, 421,000. Correct. Yes. Okay. That's for the actual that. state contract price. Okay, so we Six actually months. we got it cheaper than we thought we were gonna. Okay. Actually that does raise an issue though with regard to state contract prices, but yeah. that's another matter for another day. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for that information. Uh, motion on two fifty eight. Council President, I make a motion to accept resolution two thousand thirteen two fifty eight and ask for a second. Second. Mr. Koziel. Yes. Brown. Yes. Armstead. Yes. Cosby Harling. Yes. Sadowski. Yes. Sheehy. Yes. Yamakaitis. Yes. Medina. Yes. Kaczynski. Yes. Mr. Moore. Yes. 262, uh, Ms. Malik. May I have a motion on 262, please? Council President, I make a motion to accept resolution. 2013-262 and ask for a second. Second. Mr. Koziel? Yes. Brown? Yes. Armstead? Yes. Cosby Harling? Yes. Sadowski? Yes. Sheehy? Yes. Yamakaitis? Yes. Medina? Yes. Kaczynski? Yes. Mr. Moore? Yes. Council in order to take into consideration public input into proposed ordinance will allow three minutes for each individual to speak on an ordinance on first reading. Council will not answer any questions, and everyone is reminded that the public hearing on each of the ordinances will be held next month's council meeting. Ordinance on first reading, 5733. Bond ordinance authorizing the acquisition of various items of capital equipment for the municipal garage, appropriating $114,600, therefore, and authorizing the issuance of $108,870 in bonds or notes to finance part of the cost thereof. Comments? Motion, please. Council President, I move ordinance 57-33 on introduction and I ask for a second. Second. Mr. Koziel? Yes. Brown? Armstead? Yes. Cosby Hurling? Yes. Sadowski? Yes. Sheehy? Yes. Yamakaitis? Yes. Medina? Yes. Kaczynski? Yes. Mr. Moore? Yes. 5734. Bond ordinance authorizing the acquisition of five pickup trucks with plows for the public property department and appropriating $135,000 therefore and authorizing the issuance of $128,535 in bonds or notes for financing part of the cost thereof. Comments? On three minutes, please. Get rid of your time. Uh, do we need five automatically, or could it be cut down to three? Do we got a, we're short on funds, you know, we can't make this year's budget, so uh, why do we have to go for five all of a sudden? Yeah, with three due, we're spending money before we even get it in. You know, five trucks already? Come on. Three, three looks good, but not five. Come on, we're spending money. We ain't got money, so why are we spending bonding already? Three trucks should be enough. Mrs. Zach? I'm sorry, I apologize. Uh, motion? Council President, I move Ordinance 57-34 on introduction. I ask for a second. Second. 
Mr. Cozio? Yes. Brown? Yes. Armstead? Yes. Cosby Hurling? Yes. Sadowski? Yes. Sheehy? Yes. Yamakaitis? Yes. Medina? Yes. Kaczynski? Yes. Mr. Moore? Yes. 5735. An ordinance of the City of Linden approving the application for a long-term tax exemption and authorizing the execution of a financial agreement with Meridia Lifestyles Urban Renewal Linden LLC. Comments, please, Pat Hero, three minutes. Okay, I'll make it real easy on you. Generally, these long-term tax exemptions usually just require payment to the municipality. No payment for county taxes, generally no payment for school taxes. So, let's just take second ward, third ward, fourth ward. For the sake of argument, fourth ward, you get the long-term tax exemption. But someone's got to, while you're paying municipal, somebody's got to pick up the school and county taxes. So that falls the burden on the third ward and the second ward. You see what I mean? Someone's still got to pick up that money. And we all know that the school budget and the school taxes quite frankly, are the majority of the taxes, I mean, percentage-wise, of what we have to pay. Is that fair? You could say that, is it fair for us, who don't have children in the school system, to have to pick up the school taxes then? I don't think it's fair for a long-term tax exemption for these people to get scot-free. Yes, I know they're going to say their development won't add children to the school system. Well, my house ever since I came back in 2001, hasn't added any children to the school system and is not likely to. So is it fair for me to have to pay that large amount of property taxes? I don't think so. That's my thought about regard to that. And like I said, you can't say anything tonight, but I've said it tonight and I'm going to say it next month and you think about it. Thank you for your time. Motion, please. Mrs. Malik. What's the dollar value that you would anticipate from this? Where you don't answer on first reading. There's no question. Can it, I? It, all right. So it, since you can't answer, can I go to someone? It's it's to get as a sidebar. A, a sidebar. Can I get that from someone else? Ms. Ballack, the ordinance after introduction tonight will be available on the clerk's office tomorrow, which will have the documentation attached to it. All right. Thank you. Motion. Motion. Council President, make a motion for the introduction motion. of Ordinance 57-35 uh, and ask for a second. Second. Mr. Cozio? No. Brown? No. Armstead? Yes. Cosby Hurling? Yes. Sadowski? Yes. Sheehy? Yes. Yamakaitis? Yes. Medina? Yes. Kaczynski? Yes. Mr. Moore? Yes. Uh, 5736. Bond ordinance authorizing various park improvements for the public properties department and appropriating $300,000, therefore, and authorizing the issuance of $142,500 in bonds or notes to finance part of the cost thereof. Comments, please. Motion. Council President, I move ordinance number 5736 for introduction and ask for a second. Second. Mr. Cozio? Yes. Brown? Yes. Armstead? Yes. Cosby Hurling? Yes. Sadowski? Yes. Sheehy? Yes. Yamakaitis? Yes. Medina? Yes. Kaczynski? Yes. Mr. Moore? Yes. Uh, chairman of, of the other committees, uh, anyone have anything that's dire that you had to report tonight? If not, we'll go into comments from the public in attendance on city business only. Five minutes. Is there anyone didn't get a chance to sign the sheet? Uh, Mr. Roman? Three minutes, please. Roman? Roman. Okay. Um, I don't think, I think it's all been said today, so I'm not going to, you know, repeat everyone. But, um, you know, you guys are all about you know, you don't want to do this, but you have to. I'm, I'm happy personally that, that we're not going to lose any police officers on our streets because we need them. But, um, you know, you, you guys are, are leaving it open for you guys to increase it every month, every year. You know, it's, it's, if you guys are going to do it. Maybe if it's not this exact governing body, it's going to be the next one or the one after that. You know, five years from now, it could be 50 bucks a month. 
cap it. You cap. You can't cap it because the because the fees might double overnight. Okay. Then put a clause on it. I mean, the, you know, you guys are trying to get this in before the assembly closes the loophole. Put, put the clause on it for a, a sunset clause on it for a year, two, two, two. Charges fifteen dollars, but do it for two years. You said it's a temporary fix. You said it's this is only supposed to be temporary so we can get out of this problem. But we're going to have more rateables coming in. We have all kinds of projects going on that we're going to make a lot more money. Well, if that's true, then, then when you go to do this you know, next month or whenever it is, sunset closet. So where two years from now, it'll expire. And you can, you know, if it isn't closed, then you can revisit it. If you need it again, go ahead and do it again. I brought that up. Uh, uh, and Ms. Tudek, would you give us the explanation uh, why the sunset it wouldn't be the way to go? I um, I don't have a, I'm not allowed to get an answer anyway, right? Mr. Moore? Yeah. President Moore? I mean, I just say it. I, saw, I heard the mayor say something about it, like, like you guys said, oh, we don't want to do this. We, you know, we're sorry, but we have to. I get it. Council President. Give us something back. Mr. Brown. Uh, John, it's a great idea, and, and, and that is something that's being considered. And like I, I've mentioned at this council meeting, the meeting prior to meeting prior to that, we have our financial team looking and doing projections. I think, as we learned tonight, we didn't get in this situation overnight. This is something that, you know, over time, it's now finally, finally hitting us. So what do we do differently? What do we do to prevent it? Is we need a plan. We need to see where our projections are next year to year after year after that. I've been saying that. Two years ago, we need a five-year plan. So in order for us to responsibly, you know, reasonably put in a cap, we need to know what is our budget going to look like in 2014, 2015, 2016, 2017, 2018, in order to make that decision, hey, let's put a cap in because this is where we feel, you know, our budget is going to be at. And it's not a matter of the council at this point. It's a matter of getting and leveraging the expertise and the help of our, of our professionals in order to help prepare that for us. So that's not off the table. However, we can't say, hey, we're going to do it in two years, not knowing where we're going to be at in three years from now. I understand, but be it's, it might actually just, you know, make it easier for you guys. You know, I mean, I understand this puts a lot of stress on all of you guys. We, uh, we got a lot to go. Are your time's up? But, but you know, like, you just, it'll be your easy way out next time. And, and you got to give something back to these people. Let me put no? it, it's not an easy way out now. No, uh, no one is looking to do this as an easy way We're out. We're going to ask Pat Hero to come up, please. Three minutes, please. You're right. First of all, I'd just like to have a moment of silence. Uh, as you know, as some of you may know, some of you don't. Uh, Dennis Kopecki passed away. Whenever we lose one of us who've come to the podium, they're very special people, so I'd just like to have one moment of silence. Would you please uh, give us a moment of silence, please? Thank you. Now, the mayor mentioned the garbage tax, and that's exactly what it is. It's a tax. The mayor used to say we spent money like drunken sailors. That is certainly not true. Drunken sailors can only spend their own money. The problem with you guys is you come out and get ours, and some of us can't afford it. Some of you are making such high salaries that it may not be an issue for you. Yeah, it's a little nick in the thing. But some of us have gone without dental. Some of us have gone without medical. Some of us have gone without food. What else do we go without? What else do we go without? We can't go without much. Maybe I should show up with a barrel someday just to demonstrate all the people that are having such a hard time. The mayor talks about what's right for the city of Linden. That's right, as a corporate body, what's right for the city of Linden, the employees and everything. But you forget about something. You forget about the people that Linden is supposed to represent. And some of you have let us down. Councilman Armstead, I hate to say this because personally I like you, but you know what? You've been in it for as long as I've been standing at this podium. You've been at Budget and Finance, and I'm sorry, but you've listened to Paul Workmeister, and God knows the people that instituted some of his ideas 
we wouldn't be in this position we're in. Do you know Union has 50,000 people and their budget is less than the city of Linden? Well, I'd like to know how Union does it. And you know what? I just do this as a volunteer activity. You know, and I can't afford to do this much longer. I mean, you know, because I just can't afford to even stay in the city of Linden the way it's going. I may not even be able to retire in the city of Linden, and a lot of people can't. I know someone that's making over 50000 a year, and they're already talking about leaving once they retire. You want to have a community in which people can retire in. That's what you want to move toward, not taxing them out of house and home. It's ridiculous. Like he said, 96 employees make over $100,000. And they say recurring revenues are the answer to balance the budget. Some of us are seniors. Some of us don't have recurring revenues. Some of us have high medical expenses. And you don't seem to understand, where do seniors, do you expect a 96-year-old woman who's lived in Linden all her life to go out to work now? Is that what you want? This is what you're doing when you voted yes. That's what you're doing. You're basically thumbing your nose at seniors. I am just, I am just outraged at this vote. And you go, you don't want to be like Hoboken. I want to be like Hoboken. I want to be in Abbott District because they don't have to pay as much in school taxes as we do. But you know what? We're not in Abbott District. And we don't have the rich kind of people like they do in Hoboken. You know, and maybe that's what you should realize. They say you should only spend 10% of your income on property taxes. Well, a lot of people in Linden are spending a lot more than 10% of their income in property taxes. And until you keep saying, you know, oh, I'm Mr. Finance and I can do all things with finance and all I can do is increase your taxes, increase your taxes, increase your taxes, and refuse to cut down on items and spending and stuff, saying that's not good for finance because we have to keep things level. As I said, only a finance major person, I don't even know if you're a major, I don't even know if you went to college, but um, you don't seem to let us know anything about your background. But anyway, it does seem to me that it's so unfair for us who have to go further and further into debt, and debt's not a good thing despite what you might think, and keeping things level. I'd rather see things declining, because at least when you decline interest rates, that's better for a community and that's better for your pocketbook. I don't, like I said, I've been talking about this for nine years and I haven't gotten one penny for talking about this kind of stuff or saying what I have to say. I've done this all volunteer out of the goodness of my heart and listening to you and it just seems as though it's just go in one ear and out the other. Because seconds. you don't seem to cut down on your spending and you don't seem to listen. And it's about time you did, okay? Because we, can, we are taxed out and we can't take it. And maybe we just would like to spend money on three meals a day instead of just one. Thank you for your time. And there are a lot of people out there like me and other people, okay? Thank you. Thank you. Mr. President. Mr. Brown. I'd like to respond. Ms. Hero, there's a lot of things I have problems with what you said. One, you talk about cutting down spending. I would like to, I would, you're more than welcome to come up one day in the treasurer's office and we will show you where we cut down spending because you went to two of our budget meetings mm -hmm. and we showed you where we cut spending. So that's number one to say that we don't. Number two, when you come up here and say that nobody on council here cares about residents, about what's going on, that's totally untrue. We all come, we all campaign, we all knock on doors and we see what's going on. But the reality is, is the other option, Ms. Hero, unless you agree with that, I disagree with the state of New Jersey coming in to Linden and taking us over. I made it perfectly clear, we are gonna run out of cash in July and August. How am I gonna knowingly vote against saving Linden at this point? What you're, tell what you're saying to me is cut services, so reduce, re reduce garbage pickup, reduce trash pickup, and I gave you, I went over the list over and over again of services that we were having to you. cut. What I'm getting from you is what you're telling me is that's okay. Don't, don't, don't find a recurring revenue to pay for that stuff. Let it go by the wayside. How is that fair to 
my neighbor? How is that fair to you? How is it fair to anyone here in Linden where we're just going to have a total disregard as far as our current state of affair and let things go by the wayside? It would be irresponsible and I would be neglecting my fiduciary responsibility knowing that we're in a financial crisis not to do something about it. Now, you may disagree with it, Ms. Pat, Ms. Hero, and I respect your opinion, but not once have you came up with any idea as far as a reoccurring revenue or any type of revenue source where we could do to fix this. At the same time, last month, I asked you to come to our, Mudget, uh, our Monday night caucus meetings. I didn't see you there yesterday when we were at length discussing this. This is a major problem that no one here is taking lightly. I've made it very clear that we are risking a downgrade in our, in our, in our, bond, uh, in our um, bond rating. But you're neglecting to mention and you're neglecting to remember, and you're neglecting, I'm sorry, to take in consideration is that we have a serious problem that we're trying to stop. Linden is bleeding. I've been saying this for the last couple of months. You're hearing from our treasurer about our assessed value in Linden over the last couple of years, citywide has gone down, gone down by over $120 million. That affects your taxes right off the bat. Where businesses are leaving here, homeowners are leaving here, we need to Duh. do something, but all I'm hearing from you is cut spending. That's why they're leaving, because the property taxes are too high and we're all leaving for other communities, Ms. Ms. including Ms. people who have government Ms. jobs that Ms. when they Brown, retire, Ms. get Ms. out of New Jersey. Five minutes are up. I have to move I know. on. I'm just responding Mr. to Mr. Uh, Brown, and Sharp. I'm not required to be a count right. caucus means because I'm trying to get some reoccurring revenue for my own finances. Thank you. Thank you, staying within the time I'm in a pretty good mood tonight, and I'm very, thank you for passing that. Okay. Derek brought something up today, and uh, my home has a new roof on it, and uh, the re Linda redevelopment, I applied for something, and I'm entitled to being a homeowner, and I'm disabled. And uh, they put a new saw line in my home, new windows and everything, and like Derek said, we need to have an authority here in our trash. Like, uh, all the old stuff they took out of my house and everything, me and my friend, we took all the old, and we took it down over under the bridge, under there. And I got back all the old that was in that house, new saw, new saw line, it was been there since 1945, the aluminum on the windows, and all the other stuff that they did. So I went down, me and my friend, and all the old that was in that house, amounted to $400 that I got, all right? So I'm, I'm stuck here, you know, but that's okay. But you brought up a very good point, Derek. You know, and even our policing, when the scalpers come in here when we have trash pickup, we do need an authority on how we handle our recycle, especially on trash day. I'm willing to work along with this. We do need an authority on trash day pickups, because we lose a lot of money, right, Jack? Every time this trash pickup, the scalpers are coming into our town. Even last week, I have a picture of the guy coming in. Our truck was right down the street. He was in his black truck, and he's floating up the metal and this thing. You know, there needs to be a policing on that. We need an authority on our recycling, our trash, and everything, we do need that. If I can make $400 just taking old metal and aluminum off my home, why can't we set up an authority like this, whether it be from the public or employees of the city, when there's a trash pickup, watch the day before, you know, or, or have an authority, tell the residents, when we're picking up their trash, make sure we're there. When they put it up, they call. I'm throwing this metal out. I'm throwing this aluminum out. And have our trucks go out immediately and get that money so the city ain't losing that money. Like we've been over the years. You know, and everything else, I'm very happy. You know, my taxes aren't going to go up that much with that garbage tax. I just figured it out. The county and what you give me. So it's three hundred sixty-five dollars over four, right? It's one twenty with two percent. It's okay. I can afford it, and I'm on a limited income, so I can afford it. You know. So, thank you. 
14, 15, we'll worry about it when we get there. But this one, thank you guys. Very all in agreement. And we'll start working on next. That's it. Thank you. Uh, Roman Fleshman. All right. John Principato. Charles Kais. Uh, Jay Bridge. George Alvarez. John Roman. John Roman, Summit Street, the low residents of Linden and Council. I'd like to talk trash. Trash pickup is gone in my ward for the last time for this year. Wednesday was the last day, the 12th. I'm glad to see it go. In my travels on that day, it was like a feeding frenzy in the ward. People in cars, walking the ward, calling people on cell phones, signaling partners in crime to come pick up, you know, the stuff they wanted out of their trash. You know, and it was the day before. It's the same thing. The, the day earlier, they're doing it. I'd never seen it that crowded before in the ward where people were picking trash. It's like they knew it was the last time they were going to be able to do it in that part of the ward. So what did I do? I called the police non-emergency number. I proceeded to tell the operator about one truck in particular that I had half the license plate number on. And, uh, you know, I said, they're picking trash. And she says to me, they're stealing? Okay, like it's nothing. So again, I say, there's a, tra there's a city ordinance that doesn't allow people picking trash from the curb in Linden. It's like I told her something she didn't know. I know the police are very busy, so in this case, if you want to stop people from picking trash, stop the residents from putting it, putting it out. Punish the residents because the city can't enforce ordinances or balance the budget. Over the years, I have created lots of trash, and I have great respect for those who work for the city and take it away. For years, I've heard how the city was losing out on the medals from these collections. I got news for you. It's not only the medals these people are taking. You know, what they don't use, you find them selling at flea markets, local flea markets. I go there all the time, and that's what you see. Somebody else's trash, I think Mr. Armstead said it, is somebody else's gold, and that's what's going on. I just hope if, in fact, you bring this back in the future, you do a better job of it, because this is, like you said, money we're losing. Thank you. Mrs. Malik. I just quickly scanned the ordinance on first reading that I was referring to. This was 5737. And the question I asked before, which I couldn't ask, was what's the anticipation or anticipated revenue that we can expect? In looking through this ordinance, it's just a lot of legalese. And there's one paragraph here saying, in lieu of real estate property, um, property tax, they're going to get some sort of an exemption. So what I'd like to know is, uh, for this Meridian Lifestyle Urban Renewal, uh, what kind of dollars are we talking about anticipating? Because we don't really know what the project's going to be. Uh, we're going to have a tax exemption. We don't know really how long. I don't see dollar values in here, so we're promising something, or you're, you're running an ordinance, but not it, kind of blindly. That, that's my point. So. A dollar, yeah. Next, next month, we'll answer that question. Our professionals are here. It's not a tax abatement. They will be paying taxes more than normal property taxes. But again, the professionals will be here during adoption, and they will go into detail about it. But are we talking about the size of a bread back box or a catalog? I mean, a million dollars, 500,000, 5 million? About the, when it's all said and done, I think would we get back? It's around 280,000, something like that. And it's a 30-year, it's a 30-year abatement with a 2.5. Is it was it either two so or 2.5? So 280,000 for 30 years. Okay. It's supposed to increase. The first year, Ms. Bismalik, it's a any tax abatement agreement under the law has steps to it. This will step up over the life of the agreement. Which is uh, how long? I'm sorry, it's sorry, a, the net to the city. I, I wrote agreement. it down. It, 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 Okay, so you can start at the base two hundred eighty thousand. It'll be three hundred. The base percent it steps up in certain percentages over the life of the agreement. In in the long run, uh, the city will receive more than it would receive on the regular taxes on the property. Mm. The city's going to receive more. The city, the city will realize more 
than it would receive on just net real estate taxes if the property was taxed normally. Explain, and how is that? I mean, I'm missing a point here then. That's, that's why pilots work. That's why municipalities do them, because we receive the city receives the pilot payment it's instead of receiving net taxes. Net taxes, we only get one third or less of the taxes. The pilot payment, we get 95% of. Is payment, is pilot stands for payment in lieu of taxes. What, so, what, what, what you're using? John, can you explain what pilot means? Pilot? Yeah, okay. it's a pilot. Yeah, okay. yeah, just like yeah, they're, they're pay, they, there's, you, you, you pay a payment in lieu of taxes. For That's what pilot terms. stands for. Right, okay. And so what? there's a statute, the long-term tax exempt statute has certain standards as to what the agreements have to have in them in terms of length, in terms of uh, amounts, depending on what the project is. Uh, the net result is, uh, and the professionals had the numbers here, but over the life of the agreement, the city receives more than it would receive in regular real estate taxes. All right, so they're promising this pilot payment, but do you know what this project's actually going to be and how much money they're going to be bringing in? Do you know really all the details the, of this project? I, again, the, the attorneys, the outside attorney and uh, financial advisor that are working on it have, have love for the evening. They could give you the details. It'll be here next month. Uh, or you could come by City Hall. We have the, the documents on the bid documents and the developer and what the proposed project is. So we do have those details. Correct. Right. You could come by City Hall. I, uh, Lexus, I guess your office would have some of it. And who do I see? Uh, probably, I would check with either the clerk's office or Alexis's office. All right. Thank you. The following council meetings will be as follows. Council conference meeting Monday, July 15, 2013 at uh, 6 p.m. in the council conference room, City Hall, 301 North Wood Avenue. Council, what? Who? Did you sign the sheet? He didn't sign the sheet, Jimmy. It's, not signed. I would have called you, Henry. She signed. Mrs. Cosby Hurling, if you have a comment, will you use your microphone, please? We're concluding the meeting. July 15, 2013, at 6 p.m. in the Council Conference Room, City Hall, 301 Northwood Avenue. Council Conference meeting prior to the Council meeting. Tuesday, July 16, 2013, at 6 p.m. in the Council Conference Room. City Hall, 301 Northwood Avenue. Council meeting Tuesday, July 16, at 7 p.m. in the Council Chambers, City Hall, 301 Northwood Avenue. Ask for a motion to adjourn. Ask for a second. 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 Mr. Koziel. Yes. Brown. Yes. Armstead. Yes. Cosby Harling. Yes. Sadowski? Yes. Sheehy? Yes. Yamakaitis? Yes. Medina? Yes. Kaczynski? Yes. Mr. Moore? Yes. Good evening.